doing a stream where I chug water at the beginning. That's not really a an original stream idea, but you know I, I've got that idea. So, <laughs> who even drinks water? Like, I've never seen it. You know what I have seen? An intro in three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the BNS stream today on this fine first of uh, May. 2023. I hope you're having a wonderful day, uh, a wonderful week even, and a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, my week has been <laughs> a little all over the place, but you know what? We we wrap up, we make things work out. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it's been pretty alright, other than I am totally feeling the cold. I don't know why, there's been crazy cold snaps in Sydney land. Um, so, it's not like someone's gonna go, oh, 17 degrees Celsius? That's not that bad, but... Uh, I'm ill-equipped. Let's just say that. So, but you know what I am equipped for? Starting the game. So yep, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm chugging water at the beginning of the stream. Uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, you'll hear some bottle noises in like five minutes when I've drunk it all. Um, but yeah, no, this stream is uh, continuing on with Spyro 3. This will probably be the last stream because um, in the... Well, I mean, I've been doing a good job doing... Uh, the entirety of a world and nothing more than that in one stream. But the third world is a little shorter. And that means I have the room to do a little bit of bonus stuff for you. Just, just a little bit of, hey, check this out. This is something that, like, you know, you may not have known about. Or you may have actually known about. Um, so let's hop right into things. Uh, I'm already 79% of the way through the game. Um, I mean, I guess that's, you know, the first two worlds but yeah no it's a lot so uh, just at the end of the last stream as well i oh whoops <laughs> i'm in the wrong the wrong hub as well uh but just at the end of the last world uh or the last stream i got the um the the headbutt ability and uh i have demonstrated its uses in the two levels in this hub so now we go over to the third hub and we fully complete the game that is a weird angle that is that's not the angle that the building is at because the right side is facing towards the start and the left side is facing towards the, the boss. Like, hold on, legit. Like, the, the boss is in there. The start is up here. I don't know. So, anyway, uh, Laura's up there. I actively avoided these gems, so we'll just pick them back up. Spyro, Ripto's still alive, and he's locked us out of the castle. Even worse, he's stolen our new power crystal for the super portal. If you can collect enough orbs, you'll be able to get the power crystal back from Ripto, and we can send you to Dragon Shores. So now this is the the premise for this world. There's no barrier. Actually, there is a there's a barrier preventing you from entering one of the levels. Um, like you need so many orbs. You definitely need the headbutt in order to activate this rock, which allows you to walk towards the end boss, as well as also there's a level over here. I think you still get access to two of the levels, at least, without needing any extras, but... Also, eh, if you've been collecting everything, you know, by this point in the game, it's like, yeah, like, who, who cares? It doesn't matter. Um, so we might as well just go around, let's do a tour of the, the hub. Uh, so there's this massive portal in the center, you may remember this from an old cutscene. Uh, I'm gonna take the, the trek up these stairs, because they've placed gems all over the place up these stairs. Just why not? It's a painful staircase. <laughs> Uh, and Alora somehow beat us up here. Alora's probably gonna tell us that we've got enough- Ooh, do we have enough orbs? Actually, I don't know if we have enough. Alright, Spyro! Okay. You've got the orbs. Defeat of Ripto is only moments away, right? Right? Well, anyway, good luck. He's right through this door. He is right through the door. He's been chilling. So, now, kind of iffy gem placement, because I think the moment you go past that, that one green gem, you're in the boss room, so... Uh... I guess it must have been 40 orbs. I think I've been saying 50. I don't know. I, don't, I always 100% this game. Uh, there's some real cheeky locations, such as over here, which has uh, this little bit that you can actually swim and dive into and uh, follow the tunnel. And it puts you out on top of here. You don't know where this is, but uh, you get this orb. This is an orb chilling up here. And, uh,. Moneybags is just chilling. One last speedway adventure for you, Spyro. It's not that expensive, you know. Huh. Two hundred. Wisely, 
I bet a quick dragon like you will win your money back in no time. I mean, he is correct. He is correct, but you know what? I might as well just do the speedway right now because it's here. You might as well. So this is the Canyon Speedway. This is the last speedway in the game. And I believe uh, this is one of the 1 minute 10 speedways. Uh, Time-wise. So this one is super easy because I don't know why as the fourth one it presents itself to you so neatly You got your goats. Your goats are right here You're forced into like a little alley. Oh, might as well get one free go. One free guy as well. Oh, two free guys while you're at it And then you're done with the goats. Immediately you're presented with rings, okay? It's pretty, you know, clear where the rings want you to go Okay, now you're done with the rings. There is a tractor that presents itself to you and even though I am going forward you know like oh I could be running into more tractors if I turn the other way once you destroy the tractors there because I kind of you know shortcut one of the tractors doesn't really matter here's all the birds Oops. The music is jamming, but it's such a quick level, and I'm personally, you know, done with this level too quickly. Oh. Maybe this is how I don't get 110, because I can't do these birds right. Oh my gosh, I legitimately can't do these birds. That wasn't good enough for time, let me tell you that. But, the theory is there. 112, like, legit, legit. Can we save three seconds? 100% we can save 3 seconds if I take another stab at it. So yeah, this one's- I don't know, this, this speedway doesn't click with me as much. And I think it is just because the options aren't there. I mean, you could probably do a route, but you don't really have to think about it. I think it's just because of how railroaded, like, you know, all the- all the objects are, basically. And I guess it's because it's a canyon. They've got to put walls. But, man, I can't even think of another Spyro, like, at least one of the, you know, the original four, where there's a speedway that's so narrow. Alright, take two of the birds. Gosh, this music's a jam, though. It's going. Oh. Okay, listen, that was supposed to be 1 minute 10, and I got 1 minute. And you could probably do even better. So where's Hunter chilling? I believe he's chilling where the birds are. I guess the question is, where are the birds? I think... I think, yeah, it's like two rings. I think that's the, the layout of the place. So if you follow the track, you end up in, yeah, the area with the birds, but lower down. And Hunter is just casually chilling up here with a remote All control. Right, Spyro. Are you ready to try out my plane? I just the fixed plane? it, and I'm pretty sure it won't crash now. Hmm. Oh, I hit X. Sorry. Ah. He basically says use the D-pad to fire. But you can use the stick if you want. It's inverted controls, so down moves the cursor up, which is a little confusing to be honest. Uh, so yeah, you gotta hold down circle, you could tap circle, but no, you hold down circle, and you try and find, you know, all the targets. You got these blimps coming by, it's not too bad as long as you kind of remember which way aims up and which way aims down. You're gonna be in some kind of weird spots from time to time, but it's not too bad. I'll take a couple of goes the first time. Yeah, I don't know, this level... It doesn't click with me as much. And I think it's just because, you know, the other speedways are just, there's more things going on with them. If anything, I think they go, Bloom's Tower Defense, this is a Bloom's Tower Defense level. Uh, don't worry about that blimp, it comes back, I believe. There it is. And so is this other target that I, that I missed. And, and then two blimps cross over each other. This is totally a blue hey, sound fence. Where's my, where's my um, ceramic balloon be throwing me off? Had such a good pilot. Come on, answer. One out of one. Woo! <laughs> anyway, that's it. That's actually all the speedways in the game. I thought I might as well just 
tick off the speedway because it's a it's a quickie right here while doing the tour around the the main hub sure so there we go nice and easy and money bags has bug it off yet again um this is a, a nice hub it legitimately conveys the idea of being cold and I think it's because of uh, not only the snow but nighttime as well and this kind of like wide range on the music there's some real high chimes going on but there's also the the synth is a lot deeper than the other levels I don't know you got these kinds of chat oh we probably saw this in the other <laughs> level didn't we where did the gems keep coming from after you ground found it who knows uh, the rocks are the same boat, although they only spit out one gem, so... Uh, but we're back at the start. Um, for some odd reason, they've got, uh... And you may have noticed this, they've got the warp all the way at the top of the stairs as well. But it's a lot of effort to... You know, I don't know, it, it, it's just because it doesn't feel like as big a hub world. Probably because there's only half as many levels as the last one, but... Still, yeah. Uh... Yeah, I've got a um, uh, couple of things to talk about, but I thought one important thing... Or also, there's just one orb in there. How many orbs are just chilling? There's three chilling. Well, we've nearly got all the orbs, uh, all the gems in the level already, so... Uh, this is uh, probably the first level, Mystic Marsh, so we'll go into that one uh, first. But we'll take a trek around. Um, so if you go in this direction, uh, just ice, you know, just... Bit of ice. It's like the second bit of ice in the whole game, isn't it? And I don't think any of the other um, levels have ice, so you know, get used well, to it. It's like some it. Consolation that you've collected so many orbs. My high-tech portal here will take you to Cloud Temples. So yeah, one of the levels is also locked off by orbs, but you don't have to go into the ice gem roll. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This ice, like, I guess the one thing you'd pick up on is that Spyro doesn't appear until he's skating on the ice. I guess that's the one thing. But like all the objects seem to appear on the ice pretty nicely. It's got a pretty limited range of things that it needs to render as well, so that always helps. Um, so yeah, anyway, there's a level over there, Robotica Farms. And uh, in this direction, through this little tunnel, is level number four, which also requires orbs. I can see you've learned the value of orbs, Spyro. This touchy gate should work perfectly with the help of your impressive orb collection. And this leads to Metropolis. What a wonderful name. That just means, like, city city. I'm pretty sure it means city city. <laughs> uh, and a wonderful whirlwind up here, which gives you some good height so you don't have to climb the stairs all the time. But also, kind of importantly, uh, there's just an orb chilling up here. As well as also a few more gems. And that's it. That's that's the whole hub. It's not too big. Uh, but it's got some, some places that you can explore. You know, a bit of verticality and a bit of roofs is always nice. Although this kind of part where you start in is just, uh, it's just chilling now. You know, there's some ice down below. There's like a... Yeah, you can... Hold on, you can see that. It's a mound of ice and then it just continues into, into oblivion down below. So, oh well. Anyway, let's uh, let's start the first level, Mystic Marsh. So, uh, for reference, none of these levels have skill points. So, the very last level uh, that I had to get a skill point in was um, in the in the last hub, and there's going to be one in the boss level for not taking a hit. But if I don't get it, we'll see by the end of this the stream. Wee. Dead. <laughs> Very dead. They got these real high voices in that cutscene and you just talk to them. And it's just like... Things just aren't the same <laughs> since our magic fountain shut off. It sure would help if you could find out what evil force is behind this disaster. <laughs> it's just this hilarious voice, I tell ya. Um, this level is a little annoying because these monkeys are just... A little too high up, but uh, one key thing is uh, out of 36 enemies, you're gonna get 20 in order to even access this whole upper part. But this is a pretty cool level, apart from the fog is pretty gnarly. Um, because it's rather open, there's like, this whole area and you just kind of, you know, 
explore it. There's no room. What's up, Mr. Crip? How's it going? Um, but yeah, you got these little metal guys. You got big elephants that you can flame. I guess they're little rhinos. Uh, you got this river. That's kind of your big landmark um, that you'll rely on. As you walk down the level, uh, you'll get run over by elephants. Whoop, he's returning home. Um, you'll see a lot of things. You'll just see like this duck. There's just a duck here. I uh, remember, just like Spyro 1, when the water is slightly more purple, it's death. Except that water would also be death, but there's real death water. They finally did it. Oh, okay, more, more elephant. He, he touched the death water. Um, but yeah, it's it's a rather open area, and, and honestly, I mean, given, you know, a lot of the team continued on to Ratchet and Clank, I don't know, man, if you like Ratchet and Clank and you never played Spyro, this is probably going to be a very, like, weirdly, um, you know, familiar-looking area. It wasn't directly... Exactly, yeah, yeah, it's poison color. I'm pretty sure, like, there's just as much media where poison is, like, a, a green liquid, or sometimes an orange liquid. Never blue. Blue is... blue is glue. And you can't do red, because red is blood. And you can't do, um... yellow? Because it's urine. You can't do that. <laughs> so, uh... Speaking of yellow... Uh, so the segue I want to mention is... After, uh, how many years of my YouTube channel... Don't drink the piss water, exactly. After so much of my YouTube channel... Uh, existing... I have finally done it. I have gotten a video uh, with limited ads. We did it. It was last week's stream. The YouTube VOD somehow flagged the sensor somewhere uh, saying, you know, this video is not suitable for ads. And uh, weirdly, and, and, and I guess this is a weird thing, is that like, I, you know, it's not a new thing. I'm, I'm, like, we all know what it's like, but honestly, as a creator, it's like, huh. When you get a copyright strike, brown water equals Africa. I feel like there's more places where there's brown water, but... <laughs> um, but yeah, a, uh, like, when you get a, um... Uh, a, uh, limited ads, uh, kind of notice. One, I didn't get any notification. I'm just... <laughs> America. Uh, I didn't... Oh my gosh. Professor ah, Spyro! Sup, so Love? How's it going? Here. <laughs> <laughs> I've <laughs> lost, lost it. I do have this lost it. I've and lost my pencil. It for my pencil. Oh. Nice. Good old May 1st. It's a uh, bank day in uh, Queensland, isn't it, today? Mm. It just is, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the professor here, I mean, we'll get into this in a bit, but he gives you an egg. And you can spit this egg wherever you want. I'll come back for the egg. Um, but yeah, so getting a video limited ads. Also, watch out, that's puffer fish slash platypus? Benny the platypus? What's just that? Pokemon Rip Oh, exactly. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, here's the duck, it's chilling. Uh, you don't get a notice when you get a limited ads. So I just saw my, uh, my video dashboard and I was like, oh, look, limited ads. Uh, bonus points, there's also no info about your limited ads. The stream last week was 2 hours 49, and, uh, there's no, like, you said controversial topic, or you said, um, hateful content, it was just like, video has limited ads. And no time spent, no nothing. You can't judge at what point in your 2 hour 49 stream was apparently, uh, advertiser unfriendly. Now, you get one button, and it says, uh, like, request, or like, appeal, or something like that. And then they warn you, you only get one shot at this, although, you know, like, worst case written down is, okay, well, they just don't, you know, agree with it, and the video is permanently now limited ads, and you don't get to reappeal. Uh, although, realistically, I've also heard people say, um, you know, you get more videos flagged if you start appealing and they go wrong. But I thought, eh, who cares? So I clicked appeal, 24 hours later, it came back. Also, this is the end of level, just up here. What? Oh, hmm. I must have dozed off there. Thanks, Snoozle. Looks like I let the fountain switch off. Here, take this orb and, um, don't mention my little nap to Hydra, okay? <laughs> well, that's, that's the level, basically. You go around, kill a bunch of elephants, and then... Oh, heck yeah! Promotion of my chant. This is the same link. It's the same link, bro. 
Different bot, same link. He's not even trying it. What do, what do you mean by the quality of bots? Like, it, it's just the number. That's all That's all you need to do to game the system. Bro, I'd rather have real viewers. <laughs> uh, also, challenge number two up here. Ah, Spyro, a friendly face. <laughs> a bunch of rotten thieves have stolen the spark plugs, and I'm stuck here. Please get the four plugs back. The four plugs, you say? Hmm. <laughs> So, anyway, uh, there's, yeah, there's three orbs in this level, and all the levels in this hub, they don't have talismans. They will just give you another orb when you, um, get to the end. So, if you're short of orbs, these levels are probably some of the quicker ones to get them. Uh, I love how poop water, real water, there's a lot of these fun little tunnels that interject in this, uh, upper part of the level, which is pretty cool. And that's kind of weird. I assume because there's another, uh, bit of water somewhere. That'd be weird if, uh, it wasn't, though. Yeah, 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 here we go. So, uh, this level's gonna take me a little bit to try and get all the gems, because it is, um, you know, it, it is a lot wider. It's a lot harder to, to spot where things are, but we should be able to do it. Um, especially because I should be able to get, like, a whole number of gems now, because I've, I've collected everything. Fuji water, exactly! What's well, like the pr the the premium water? Dasani. Wait, Dasani's the um the Coca Cola water, isn't it? No, that's Cool Ridge, isn't it? Which one's the which one's the one that comes in like glass bottles? Isn't that Dasani? I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. Feedback for YouTube. Uh. Getting a video flagged and having no notice is really annoying. Having no information as to how you can change the content, normal water is premium water. It is, it's relatively premium, but having like decently, well, I was gonna say decently pure water, but it's like, can you just buy like deionized water off the shelf? It's cheap as if you really want pure water. There's also, uh, this bit, uh, which I briefly explored for a moment, but, uh, there's these little rooftops above the, um, above the starting area with a lot more enemies on them as well. Uh, you might also spot the, uh, the spark bug thieves, which, are uh, these little kangaroo fellows. There'll probably be one up here. <laughs> Kick that guy. I think that's the last, yeah, that's the last enemy. Cool. Um... Yeah, uh, I did get an email telling me my appeal went through, but I didn't get one before, so anyway, not much to say about a, a video getting, um, ad-blocked other than, or not, yeah, but other than, like, okay, sure. For reference, it doesn't even make any money anyway, so I'm not too fussed if it has ads removed, but I, I do, I do care because, uh, having ads removed is a indicator that your channel is... Uh, starting to get, um, you know, the, the attention, I guess. And that's, uh, that's a little annoying, so. Uh, here's one guy, he's just chilling, he walks around in circles, and you don't even have to charge. And you gotta watch it. Watch it fly towards you. There you go. So four plugs, four opportunities to flame a guy. Uh, let's bounce up, because yeah, there's two in the, the lower region here. Two in the upper region. Uh, I think the easiest way is probably to go this way. This guy's unfortunately in a bit of a clockwise rotation, so you have to go. At least it's not rage shadow maggots. That is true. Listen, I have a little bit of integrity. A little bit. I like this this chase here. Cause you gotta you gotta really like push for it. It's not too bad though. Oh, I jumped. <laughs> there you go, spark plug yet again. Uh, so the other two spark plugs are on the uh, above ground level. Um, here's another guy. So, uh, oops, <laughs> camera. Can I swim here? I think I did. Just like a bridge. Oh, and he goes into the water, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, Uh, so number two is, uh, 
Well, the hard drives came, and uh, I have done all the transfer stuff, but one of the drives is super dead, so... Uh, there's nothing important lost on them, I can always recreate some of the data. Um, pretty much all the data that I couldn't get, so that's all good. Um, but it's definitely one of, uh, you know, it's got me in the mindset of going, hmm, hard drive died, time to buy more, like... That's a weird... Not a weird, but... Oh, oh I caught him. I don't know whether to be proud of the Ukrainians you credit or angry for the casino. Oh, the Raid Shadow Le Legends is made by Ukrainians? Interesting. I did not know that. I would have imagined, um, you know, uh, probably China, just because mobile games are very big over there. But where do they get the money? That's that's the bit I don't understand with Raid Shadow Legends. And maybe someone at Raid Shadow Legends can answer that for me. But like, legit, do people spend that much money on Raid Shadow Legends that they can, you know, sponsor? Like every video under the sun. Red Shadow Legends is probably the best bad mobile game. Haven't played it though. My problem with mobile games is that there is a lot of them. It's very hard to like even try and consider, you know, like which ones are the worst ones. They got bought by Australian Casino. Ah, they're our stuff now. Here, young dragon friend, take this. It's museum quality, but you deserve it. <laughs> museum quality, hey. So you can blame us for Raid Shadow Legends now. Ooh, I can talk. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the weirdest part as well about like Raid Shadow Legends is that... What? What? Oh, I thought I nearly ground pound into the poop water. That's a kind of interesting... Like... <laughs> yeah, that's a weird spot now I think about it. They took real casino money to make real casino, it's still Ukrainian. Oh, so, okay. So it's still Ukrainian, it's just an Australian company bought it? I gotta read more into it. All right, so I'm missing, oh, I, I have seen that one gem. I have seen that one gem. Someone was probably in the chat gone, oh my gosh, you were missing the gem from the, from the, like where the duck was. No, no, I saw it, I didn't go for it, and now it's like, oh look, I've got one left. So let's do, the challenge. So yeah, it's it's on this weird like little just part on its own. You might miss this otherwise. Why do I need that pencil back? Uh, would you like to start over with a new egg? Yeah, I I don't know where the egg went. <laughs> Maybe it was around the corner. Here's another egg. You won't be able to trade it directly for a pencil, you know. So this is a really bizarre like mini oh like side thing you gotta do. You gotta get the egg, and then you've gotta go. Where on the level does the egg go? Uh, you missed Russian YouTube back in the day. It's bought all the ads and up the market price for this. Ugh. And the egg, interestingly, goes up here. You just have to notice that there's a, uh, there's a nest up here. And you can spit the egg. And it goes into the nest and then a bird comes by and the bird is like, Ah, here's your pencil. Nah, it's a seed. So now you're like, uh, seed? Where does the seed go? Fortunately, I think it's on on screen. The seed goes in the pot. This pot here has a little Venus flytrap, it spits out a duck. I'm not too sure if it's a real duck, I hope not. <laughs> this is technically a vegan duck because it came from a plant. Never trust a vegan duck. And that's why I was like, oh, I'll come back here later. So spit the duck. Uh, this is awkwardly not in the right spot. There you go. Are you happy? Oh my god, there you go. Now you're happy. <laughs> Ugh! Uh, that duck was choking on a beetroot. So now you get a beetroot. <laughs> so you're like, okay. So, just, just a reminder. I had an egg, and I spat the egg into a nest, to which they dropped a seed. I put the seed into a pot and the plant spat out a duck. I gave the duck to a mother and the mother spat out a turnip. And now I'm gonna go over here because of just, you know, there's a pot here, why not? Throw the turnip into the pot and obviously you get money. Yeah, mm-hmm, yep. <laughs> now where do you put the money? Obvious, you know, obviously the fountain, right? <laughs> You can probably see this one as well, because there's coins in the water. So you just put the coin in the water, and boom! There was the pencil. It was in the fountain the whole time. 
It's a really interesting, like, little side gag, because it's just, like, it gets you going all over the level. And you have to kind of do it with, a uh, with one go. Old game puzzles are wacky. Yeah, exactly. It's good fun. My pencil! Now I can begin calculating the age of the universe again. Here, oh, you know. <laughs> Alora says she thinks I'm going to lose it. Hmm. So, uh... Because there's really old puzzle games like Monkey Island, so that's bad. I need to I need to play more puzzle games. It's been a while since I've really like played a good puzzle game. Um, I know as a as a wink wink nudge nudge, I would really like to play Harvester on stream, but uh, I do have a couple. I actually have a couple. Something like Realms of the Haunting is also another one I'd really like to play. Warrior Land. War uh, there was a Warrior Land four. And shake it which i feel like i've not like shown either of those to the best before so anyway that's the end of the level let's exit the level and obviously after turning on the water dead <laughs> just just love the the you know, the, the anonymous violence going on in this game. <laughs> Listen, okay, real talk though. If you think the anonymous violence has been so, like, bizarre in this in these uh, cutscenes, I would like to tell you the last level. So I've got three more levels to go, and then we got the boss. The last level, please tune in, because that is the most amazing way for the level to end. Uh, I thought I activated this portal. Well, it's... <laughs> Interesting, so uh, I guess this is the sister level? We're doing sister levels again. Cloud Temples also has the same kind of looking dudes, but they're a bit different. Also instead of a... They were water wizards and they're literally just like plumbers, but they turn on a tap. <laughs> when you want to watch blue but your girlfriend wants to watch orange. <laughs> Dude, how did you not how, freaking? You ever play rock paper scissors and someone cuts off your hands? You know, <laughs> like so. Uh, this guy's. I used to be one love of his voice. most powerful magicians until that big warlock over there stole my wand. He and his friends have used the magic to take over the city. I mean, he's red and evil and has a wonderful, you know, hourglass figure right there. It's kind of annoying, but he takes one flame and then the, the wizard comes over and has a wand and fixes something for you. This level is cool. And it's got that one... It's got that one which is like flute sound, which is royalty free. You make a song around that royalty free sound. And I'm pretty certain he reuses it in Enter the Dragonfly as well. You can charge these goats. Why not? Uh, a lot more linear of a level. Uh, not much to say about this, but uh, yeah. Was this the topic I was talking about before? I know I mentioned the... We're done with the, the demonetization. Red Shadow Legends? I will say, like, I mean, I, I don't think I've been ever popular enough to have a sponsorship, although I have definitely had a very small creator come to me, and I was like, sure, and then nothing really came out of that, and I was like, okay. Like, that was years ago, maybe when I was actually, like, half my age. Um, so yeah, there's nothing on this building, but you can go around the building. I like this idea of also just, like, you know, look back and go on top. Of a previous building. I love this gate. Let's just get this guy before, before he causes any more trouble. Um, yeah, no, I've still got a few games that I would like to, to play. Um, I've probably not got many that I have played in the past. Like, Spyro 2 is kind of one of the last ones. A game that I've played in the past that I don't really feel like I covered the best. Pretty much anything from Metro Prime onwards on my channel, I'm decently happy with. I don't feel the need to really replay any of that. Could be when my voice went deeper. Maybe that's why. Look at this guy. He's... He just spits rocks. And it makes this obnoxious noise. I love him. Oh. I just got this guy. Okay. Um, so, uh... Thing number two I want to mention is, uh... 
Uh, listen, I've already talked about the hardware unboxed 4070 kind of thing. Um, but they had a recent Q&A and I don't quite understand the actual perspectives now. Because they said some things that were a bit kind of... Um, I, I'm not going to say hypocritical, because that's directed at the self, but more just um, contradictory. They, they said things that are just like, um, you know, the... the, the and, and maybe I'm interpreting the video wrong, but like, it may, they made it sound like the 5700 XT, a card from like three and a half years ago, like is a great card that has aged well. But the 3070 hasn't aged well. And I get where they're coming from in the sense of, well, the 3070 cost more and also came out more recently. So the fact that it's getting, it's becoming obsolete, sure. Well, obsolete because of the VRAM thing, which honestly is, you know, turned down some settings. I'm a secret agent. I'm going to my secret hideout. Only members of my secret club are allowed to go there. This is, I'm not leaving this is the best character in the whole game. I'm tree, so you can't see me. Uh, <laughs> all right, this minigame, I love it. Hide behind the tree, follow Agent Zero. He's not gonna leave until you stand here. He then walks off and note how the camera kind of turns away. You need to be hiding behind the tree every time he turns around. And when will he turn around? Just kind of whenever. It is a set path, so the more you play this game, the more you remember what the path is. Don't worry about the gems, we'll get them on the way back. Uh, and you have to be close to him by the time he goes through these doors, otherwise you'll actually miss him. And you also can't let him see you, or else you start back from the very, very beginning. But it's not too bad, it's not too long, because it's just kind of beyond here. But <laughs> what path is he going to take? Why, he goes right, of course. Don't let him see you. And then, now nah, he's going left. Also, unique music just for this one moment. If you follow him into the room, he's like, What? You managed to get here without following me? You must be a member of my secret club after all. Here, take this secret decoder. It will allow us to send secret messages. That is a lot of secrets in two sentences. And it's just an orb, sure. <laughs> But I love this guy, he's so cool. And uh, yeah, we'll just make our way back and pick up all the gems again. It's, it's a whole side area, but there's not a lot like in it really, because you just kind of go through and then you pick up the gems on the way back. But it's a cool minigame nonetheless. All minigames. I, the more I think about it, the more I actually really do like the wackiness of all these minigames. Like... Like... I'm, I'm appreciating more that every, you know, orb challenge is something different. Every level is trying something very different. And that's something I can very appreciate, you know, especially from the first game, where it's a set of mechanics applied to a bunch of level ideas. This is like, let's just turn the script every single time. It feels pretty cool. I think it's taken one step further in the third game, and I do prefer that a little more. But... Yeah, like, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, yeah, this is not that, you know. I, I was gonna say, it's not as bad as I remember, but I didn't remember it being bad. It's more just like, this is just better than I remember. And I guess that's the hallmark of a really good game. Also, whoa. <laughs> what a shot. I'm gonna do one last, or two last glides, I guess. Charge, charge, charge. <laughs> Kill the goats, why not? One last glide. Here he comes. And there you go. Hit that last guy and you're all good. He's a happy guy. Spyro, you have freed our city from the claws of those evil warlocks. Please, take this orb. I foresee that it will help you on your journey. Wow. I love his... It's not really hair. It's... Or is it? It's like Shantae hair. And it's alive. Ugh. It's wiggly. Ugh. Listen carefully, Spyro. If you want to get back to your home world, hold that orb and recite these three words. Klatu, Varada, Ni... Never mind. Me as an adult, I finally get the Army of Darkness reference. What the heck? <laughs> it was definitely an N-word. <laughs> 
that's not my that's not a good Bruce Campbell impression. But, oh my gosh! Oh, I'm gonna clip that. Send it to a mate. I love it. <laughs> uh, too good. Um, so anyway, also these guys suddenly appear and you're like, what the heck? And uh, yeah, get enough uh, of the the spirits and Our mystical bell towers. Look at this magical power. Trolls, Only and used the bells here. haven't been rung in days. I tried a fire spell on the trolls, but it just made them crazier. Also, they're trolls. This super freeze power up will chill out the trolls, but we really need the bells to ring. They'll ring if you charge into them. So, uh, yeah, this one's a bit tricky because it's a bit of uh, timing sensitive. You can shoot these little ice balls, and you got to make sure you shoot one of the <laughs> the trolls such that you can jump off them. Now that's not too bad. Ding. There we go. That's one. Once you hit that one bell, uh, he then... Well, I'm pretty sure the guy, like, runs over. He jumps out of there <laughs> and runs back over here. So, there's a set order. Uh, I would also like to prepare you all for what is potentially my favorite line in the whole game. Oops. You can always charge him out of the, the ice. Whoop. Whoop. This is, this is my favorite line in the whole game, and it's just hilarious. I suppose you want an orb for doing that. Well, I'm afraid not. There's still one bell left. You can get to it by <laughs> using the whirlwind behind me. Just, just, just... Debbie down right here. I'm afraid not. There's still one more bell. Oh, uh, you can actually, like, use the, the whirlwind. And then just go off that guy, and you don't need to time anything. Because there's another guy running around, so you have to do, like, two platforms. You don't really have to. You can just do that one. Whoops. There we go. Good enough. That and now he's happy, and his hair's flying I didn't again. I think you could do it. Here, have a souvenir from the Mystic City gift shop. <laughs> and you get an identical orb, but it's from the gift shop this time. Amazing. So, I think the last few orbs are just above us as well, so it should be nice and easy to get get out. Uh, don't need the, the chill, because otherwise you won't be able to flame uh, a rocket that's up here. Look at all these orbs. Uh, but yeah, no, so Harbour and Box, um, yeah, like... I get where they're coming from in the sense of, oh, okay, the VRAM thing again, but I don't know. The more I, I think about the VRAM, the worse, like, not the worse, but like, the more out of touch I feel the take actually is, because, like, we as game players would preferably like our games to be supported on the most hardware as possible. And a lot of, I guess, the sentiment specifically from Hard Run Box, and I get this from a few journalists, but particularly with Hard Run Box, I'm not 100% sure if the newest games exactly look better after completely ditching old hardware. Like, they've got the minimum requirements turned up, but they don't exactly look better. You know, like, for the amount of work that your graphics card is doing, it's not better looking stuff. To me, that just screams unoptimized, and I understand, you know, there's overhead. If you're going to implement a new system, sometimes you're just going to have more overhead that's going to require a higher minimum spec, you know, like, I do programming, I get it, it's like, you know, you program in C-sharp, you program in Java, obviously that's more overhead than C, which is going to have more overhead than assembly. Like, if you really want just a computer to do a thing, you get a microcontroller, you just go straight for it. Like, that's, that is the simplest way to get something done but obviously you know if you want to create more and more complex things also he's pac-man head <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come on, oh my gosh does that count as bestiality or is that okay it's terrifying to be honest imagine getting turned into a sheep and then all the other sheeps think you're pretty yeah. So, um, 
But yeah, uh, I would like to bring up a new example that did not exist when Hard Run Box uh, did their, their original video. How long do you think? Uh, not too long. I legitimately think that the game is probably going to be done in less than an hour. But I have a couple of extra things I want to show off at the end. And it's also a small post game. I think it will take like 20 minutes, just normally. But I do want to show off some things at the end. Um, but let's go into the next level, Robotica Farms. Two more levels left, by the way. And then the game's done. Or, oh, most of the levels are done. <laughs> this is the final boss. And then I gotta do all the skill points, just to remember. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm gonna say 220. Look at that, easy. That's how you kill bugs. Oh, watch out! <laughs> Everybody ganks it till the bug comes with a farmer zapper. Ugh. <laughs> oh, these accent. These here pests have infested our farm. Could you find the time to help us get rid of them? Find your way over to the giant bug lamp and turn it on so we can zap any more invading pests. Amazing. So, uh, pretty much, um, you remember that one level? I think it's actually Nort Cove in um, Spiral 1, where you got guys with rolling barrels. Pretty much uh, that. Uh, you can kill this guy in a couple of ways, but uh, the general recommended thing is to spit the thing at them. So that's why they keep throwing spit things. The accent increases farming efficiency. Exactly. But it's pretty much the same gist. You can, you know, kill the guy at the end and he stops throwing things at you, basically, or rolling things at you. Um, this is a neat level. It's, uh, ooh, there's another life. How many lives are we at? 38? Cool. Very Spyro 1 music again. This enemy is kind of cool. Because you start spinning around and you gotta... Pretty sure you charge him, and then he falls over and you ground pound him and then he just explodes. Why not? And the hat. The hat helps! Dude, him being a robot just seems like... A little more tragic, knowing today's work climate. How many prompt engineers did it take to create this farmer? He is the prompt engineer. Uh, you can charge the barrel back at this guy as well if you want. Although that didn't seem to work just then. Okay. Uh, I like enemy spinning beetles before they come at you. The man's still on our jobs. Listen, they don't have to pay him. <laughs> Why, yes, I will pay you. Turns up your reward function a little bit. Machine learning gets a little bit more endorphin. I just always think these uh, seesaws are like band aids. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. It kind of looks like it leads towards this. But no, that's a force field here. The game design didn't know what to do there. The bugs are the good guys. <laughs> exactly. So the seesaw is the way to go, but there's a little kind of side area here. I'm glad I missed that one gem, because Sparks was a little too hungry. It was on full health. He was like, nah, I'm still going. Uh, but yeah, the, the new example I want to bring up is uh, Star Wars Jedi... Survivor? Oh my gosh, I keep forgetting what's the what's the name of the games because the the two named subtitles. But the the new um Souls like Star Wars game, the sequel to Fallen Order, I think, again, I think, from 2019. So uh it's uh Im important to note, this game, one of the first things I saw about it was an article saying this game uses 21 gigabytes of video memory on a 4090 at 1440p. Granted, with all the settings turned up, but 21 gigabytes. Now, to me, I go, that's not actually, like, horrendous if, you know, there's the ability for the card to look better. Um, it doesn't. That's the short story. Here's another guy. These darn bugs are making a joke of my expensive robot scarecrows. Can you chase them down and flame them, Spyro? Ah uh, yes, my robot scarecrow. Is it an actual? Oh my gosh, it's a real living scarecrow, dude! Imagine like you're you're made out of the same material. It's like imagine if I like 
Well, I was gonna say taxidermied human. It's basically like that. So anyway, this is a kind of weird challenge. I don't know, this one doesn't click with me as much. But uh, these guys will recreate, procreate? They'll replicate, that's the term. You just gotta keep like jumping between them and try to charge specifically one. You're not flaming into a crowd, you're specifically flaming certain ones. Um, if you take too long, just one appears out of the blue again, but it's not too bad My if you can get just four, four of them. Take this doodad I done dug up yesterday. Oh, the D's. So much, so much alliteration, love it. The doodad I dug done. 58 is edging ever so closer towards the, uh, inevitable, you know, done everything mark. Oh my gosh. Um... So, uh, yeah, using VRAM at the highest setting, I'm not against, but it doesn't particularly look better, and obviously, people are gonna complain that a game uses that much VRAM. Although, weirdly, it doesn't consume that much VRAM otherwise. Like, on a- oh, sorry. On a weaker card, you can still run Ultra. And, uh, this is highlight number one. The amount of VRAM a game uses is not representative to the amount of VRAM a game actually uses. As in, the game will just allocate it. That is what's reported to the operating system does not mean the game is unoptimized because it uses more VRAM users air quotes as well. It's just, that's just what the game like allocates. It's like Chrome. Chrome uses more memory if you have more memory. It, it's not because the actual content is using that much memory. It's just, well, it's easier to not keep asking the operating system if you know how your usage is going. There we go. Pretty sure this is... All the way back down there. There's nothing really to do up there, it's just kind of, there's a lift and it just goes on top of the barn. But sure. Uh, this is the home stretch towards the end of the level now. It is a decently long level for, uh, stuff. What is this guy? It, wow, I, I didn't even realize that stretches vertically. Bad practice laziness. It could be bad practice laziness. It could be, it could be a bunch. But I guess the main thing to note is that, um, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing, I guess. The the bad thing is, well, the rest of the, the Star Wars game, uh, or rather, I think there's one particularly poor thing about the Star Wars game, and that is, uh, and Digital Foundry found this, it kind of pegs to, to uh, processor cores. It's two threads that kind of are going full go. I say kind of, because they're sometimes dropping off as well. Um, maybe they're idling, they're, they're I.O. blocked or something, they're waiting for something to load, or something like that. Um, but, uh, specifically the two threads are going, and then the graphics are waiting. So the graphics utilization is very low, and that's causing really low frame rates. No matter how good a processor you have, most processors are able to run two threads really well. And that's as well as they can run it. So, to allocate some buffer for if you know the situation, it's finding more optimization. But overall, we'll constantly preloading new textures. Um, with the direction. Yes, I do I do agree with that. Like, um, uh, I mean, Metroid Prime, I just played that um, just before this game. And that's the perfect example where it keeps the surrounding rooms in memory. So whenever you go into a room, ideally, it's loaded the surrounding rooms before you go up to the next door. Um, it kind of does take a little too long sometimes, but in general, it's doing that. And Wait a yes, it is EA as well. <laughs> the environments won't be coming near our crops now. Can I offer you a reward? A reward? Oh my gosh, it's an orb. Look at that guy's posture. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> you designed a robot with that amount of forward head. Oh my goodness, you could hold a cup on his back. Ugh. Um, yes, I do, I do agree that, um, like, EA as a management, you know, like, if I'm doing quality assurance, I don't know, I look at that and I go, please, guys, fix that, that's real easy. You shouldn't ship the game in that kind of state. Um, I feel like there's gonna be more issues as well. People also know that there's real horrendous shader compilation stutters in mid-game, to which I go, shouldn't the game pre-compile the shaders? And the answer is it does as well, but, you know, you turn off the game, turn it back on, and it recompiles the shaders I again. Denuvo could be a Denuvo thing. Poor use of Denuvo also, you know, can contribute to it. Do you think you could knock them down with a bit of a supercharge? A bit of a supercharge? 
Fancy city licking supercharge. <laughs> oh my gosh. And yes, there's a pot here and I'm gonna need to go back to the level to get this pot. I believe the next level also has a pot, I think. So this supercharge, uh, we'll see how we go. Oops, okay, nice. That was a good job. You basically gotta do a lap. Um, around this place. Uh, there is no three lap challenge, so don't worry. I did try as a kid, but it's rather difficult. And I'm gonna miss, like, gems all over the place. Uh, keep the supercharge going. See if we can keep going. <laughs> it's kinda cool that they've got this, like, rooftop course around the whole level, though. Because it really makes the level feel a lot smaller than it is, but... There you go. Watch, uh, Fleek is always 8 minute rant about that game dragon. before tuning into your stream. Ah, okay. I, found in I will also game. preface, I haven't played this game. Mm. And I really need to say that because every performance problem I've heard is performance problems I've heard, not experienced. I can... I don't, I don't play a lot of new games, so every time there's something like this, you know, I can't personally attest to it. Also, I don't have a lot of hardware, and I don't think really anyone does. So, well, some reviewers do, but... I don't know, it's a lot of effort to test a game on so many pieces of hardware. It really should be the game developer's job to do that, but... Sure. Um, yeah. I, you know, there's a certain degree of, you know, the extremities of certain architectures. So, like, you know, if you said your game runs minimum spec on a 1070, which, by the way, it actually runs okay on a 1070. You can actually run at 1080p... Um, or 1440p high, and it runs at about 30 FPS average, it doesn't seem to dip too hard. It's when you try to run 60 FPS, just in general, on any graphics card, it starts to run poorly. And that, that speaks to a greater issue. That is not, like, unoptimized in the sense of the game is drawing too many assets, that is unoptimized, the game is doing one thing wrong and it causes every piece of hardware to fail in some way. And they need to call that. Uh, AAA developers should have a fair amount of- Yeah, that as well. I- I- I hate, as well, uh, this one's a bit of a personal, uh, note, but I hate when people just say, Oh, but the games are larger and need more resources. It's like, no, you're running- Like, one, who asked for the games to be larger? I feel like that's just like, Hey, people, do you want games to be better? And, and people say, yeah, sure. And then they just equate that to larger. I don't necessarily want my games to be crazy long. I, if you make a solid, shorter game, I'm happy. And if you make a, just smaller games in general, I wouldn't, listen, I would actually be more inclined to buy three games at $45 each if, you know, they're all decently as good, and they don't have to be as long, compared to one game that's 90 bucks or even 100 bucks or 115 bucks as they're pushing now. Um, where's that pot? This one I always have trouble finding the pots. But there's a lot of whirlwinds you unlock throughout the level, so... Where did that pot go? Who knows? I'm going falsetto, so that's how you know I'm not... I'm, I'm not okay. Oh my gosh, right, right at the start. And hopefully that's it, right? There you go. I'm too good. <laughs> I seem to be blitzing through these levels. We've only got one more left. Okay. Um, so, but yeah, I, I personally do think that, like, yeah, these games are larger, but I don't know. If they run poorly, that speaks to me as pro poor project management. You're not QA testing as often. You're not validating the things you do often. Like, you're just kind of going for it. Um, is that because there's a deadline that's too hard to hit? Is it because, uh, you know, the producers or the directors are not, you know, validating as much? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dead bugs. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons and a lot of people who could be at fault and also multiple stages that could be at fault. Um, you know, like, like Cyberpunk is a great example in the sense of, like, someone should have been curbing them throughout development. A only good bug is a dead bug. Exactly. Exactly. I yada yada yada, we heard this before, Professor. Time for Metropolis! As I heard one person call that when I was a young lad. This is... We finally did it. This is my third favorite level of the game. We have one of my top three favorite levels in each of the three worlds. 
This seemed a bit odd to me after playing this game after uh, 2001. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's humorous though, I'll say that. What is the M? That's not for bus, that's for Metro? Oink oink a piggy. This insurrection from the farms has got quite out of hand. We need someone to restore order. Find the inventor droid. She's been working on something big. <laughs> I love how they try the, the city accent. So, listen, I love me my sci-fi levels. I love Force Field. It's just back, you know. So, even though you can see all the way there, it's just like, oh, okay, we'll just can't go there. Screw like the ones in Harry Potter. Oh, it could. We have space cows with lasers. We have guy with brand new technology that's only used on this level. With all the budget cuts, these elevators need serious work. See, this one here is stuck. I expect it would start working if you could just give it a good whack, though. It doesn't exactly tell you what to do, but you can take a guess. Ground pound the, the, the lift. We'll go down. Oh, sorry, did he say elevator? Elevator, sorry. It just kind of goes up and down. It's nothing really too fancy. Also, uh, suicide pigs, just watch out. They're going to come at you. Uh, big cow with a big shield. They finally did it. An enemy you cannot kill, except for when he tries to attack. Then you can. You don't even have to fight these pigs. They will just kill each other. <laughs> Why do you think I like this level? Suicide pigs and space shooting laser cows. That's all I need. And they got la lightning water. Again, what is more to love? Hold on, there. Yeah, okay, I, I, I don't know why, my brain was going, was there a skill point in here? And no, what I am remembering is there is an achievement in here, on the, the remaster. That's a freaking laser beams, exactly. So, point is, the Star Wars game is not optimized, and there's just generally this thing of, like, I don't know, people are accepting it. The worst part is that, well, it kind of does run at 30 FPS. I think that's how it got past the gate. As you can see, a vicious ox has taken over our armory. We thought that freezing the walkway would keep animals out. The ox is very tough. I advise using the bombs against it, and it'll probably take several bombs at that. So, the ox has braved the ice floor, which by the way, third time back, it's braved the ice floor, and he's throwing bombs at you. He throws the bombs in three ways. Directly at you, uh, and then diagonally. It's very hard diagonally, and I am not doing this at a good angle. I'm not. I'm not doing this very well. Uh, but I believe there's a. Oh, I believe there's an achievement for doing this without taking a hit. So, not in my version. I don't need to. I don't need to do that. Oh my gosh. There we go. Yes. Nope. All right. I'm straightening out. I'm straightening out. I'm, nope. Okay, here I go. I'm straightened out. I got this. Oh! D <laughs> I didn't hit him with either of those. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, so yeah, moral is, the game is not very optimized, and, uh, like, I mean, granted, there's articles saying, oh yeah, it's unoptimized. It's unfortunately not gonna hurt sales. I don't think enough people really care, unless it crashes. Once it crashes, I'll hold barred. Um, but, like, I'm just gonna say, enough people continued buying Cyberpunk on the PS4 Excellent up until work, Sony Dragon. stopped we letting you. defend our city properly. Take this visually pleasing reward. Oh, visually pleasing reward. Ooh! <laughs> ah, shame. 61! Heck yeah. Yeah, the ox is just chilling up here. Why not? Also, I... I <laughs> I just, I just want to remind you that the uh, the things that give you health are literally leggy eggies. Why? I don't know. That's the future, man. Leggy eggies are the future. Or the past. Who knows? Definitely hiding a lot of a lot of these gems around here. Suicide piggies again. 
me talking about YouTube demonetization, also me mentioning the word suicide a lot. Uh, did he activate one of the... One of the rockets? No, he's just flying around. He's just flying around, he's just chilling. Okay. Oh, I think one of the cows is, is getting him. Alright. Um... So yeah, but... To go back to the Hardware Unboxed video, they kind of made the point of, like, the 8 gigabytes is not enough, and then they also said, like, is the 4070 with 12 gigabytes today worse than the 3070 with 8 gigabytes two years ago? And they kind of made the, the case of, well, we don't exactly know, but I'm kind of like, exactly, like, we don't know. When the card comes out, we don't know what demands are going to be. And if a card ages poorly, well, it aged poorly. Doesn't necessarily mean planned obsolescence, as they um, proceeded to get more comments claiming that in the in the replies. It's like, oh my gosh. So, uh, point is, I don't think there's really any like alarm, cause for concern. I do believe that yeah, games are going to be using more video memory, but I'm not going to accept. I love that you can get this one <laughs> flying saucer right now without even hitting the end of the level. I don't think you can get all of them though. Oh, oh no, I've hit the poop water. Uh, save myself. No. Nope. Done. Cards age better than they did in the early 2000s. Yeah, I do agree. And I, I think as well, like, I mean, my favorite part about graphics cards now is that I used to never recommend, like, the 50 card. And now the 3050 is competent. It's still weirdly, like, behind the other cards. But it's like, yeah, the number of things that actually can be done on on the, um, 3050 is quite okay. So... I would definitely say, like, if you want, you know, the most modern feature set, I feel like the 3060 Ti is the, the card to get still. Um, or on AMD's side, I guess the 6600 XT. Uh, is the end of level, by the way. Ah, Spyro. I heard you were coming. Thank you for your efforts in thwarting this attempt at coop. Please take this item, which living creatures seem to like. Robots just being like, ah, yes, I am not alive and I'm okay with that. I have Zed clipping issues on my nose. It's a first for Avalar, a combination power up. Thank goodness you're here to test it out. These invading sheep in their spaceships must be stopped. Also, yes, the combination power up. This is the only time it appears. You get to fly and shoot fire. And uh, also, yeah, one of the, one of the fun sources uh, Still rocking with the 970 old games like Rising Storm to work fine. Yeah, exactly. The 970 is great with its, uh, I mean, <laughs> there was the controversy of the the, the half gig of VRAM that was slower than the other uh, ones. And I do agree, it's kind of annoying. But to be honest, three and a half gigs of VRAM that is fast is still very fine. I, I do kind of agree. I wish the traces were there for the last bit. I knew it. Those first sheep sent out a distress call. The next wave of saucers is incoming. So you gotta do it twice. There's five of them. They're flying all around. But this is what I love. This whole, like, I I mean, this is the last level I'm gonna be able to mention this because there's no more levels after this. But yeah, I think my gist with Spyro 2 that I really like is that they always have something more than just doing the level. Um, it's kind of there in all the games, but it's definitely here in this one. Um, and I guess it's definitely there in Spyro 3 as well. Um, but I think that's probably why no other game comes close to emulating this feeling. Is this idea of, you know, very nice approachable collector thoning. You've proven the genius of my double power-up invention. Here, keep this to commemorate your victory. Because on top of that, like, how many other collectathons came out around this time? You know, like, Banjo-Kazooie, and literally, or, or Mario 64 was a bit earlier, but Banjo-Kazooie was based on that structure. And there's, like, no end to the level. It's just a sandbox. That's definitely something some people will prefer, but I do like the idea. There's a very clear structure with this um, game. So, kids these days won't experience a quadrupling of the average card memory in a few years. I... I'm on the fence of whether quadrupling is needed, because I do agree that, like, you know, if you quadruple the size of the, the memory buff, sorry, if you quadruple the size of the screen, aka, you know, you go from 1080p to 4K, you do kind of need four times the amount of memory 
in general to, you know, also have similar quality assets in that regard. Um, I think. I think that's how it goes. Like, what's happening? Yeah, I, I do agree, though. It's not happening. And I think the, the, the big thing is that, like, you know, the demands are going too, too fast right now. I don't think that the they're really that capable of having cards with enough VRAM. Because, I, I mean, we, we made the comment of, like, if some people are worried that 12 is not enough, either they're completely off the money, or they're so on the money it's going to keep going way too fast. I've heard Nick Glass with. I have not. I do not know many Nick Glasses. Swiss computer scientists. I'm still under the impression that NVIDIA could have had more memory on their cards and there's a bit of, you know, market segmentation they've induced just to keep the Quadro separate. Um, no, not- well, I guess there's robots in Spyro. <laughs> I guess that's deep Spyro lore. Um, trying to think, where's the remaining 26 gems? Which is actually the last 26 gems of the whole game, just want to remind you. Um, oh! I got it off the top of my head, yes. This one's going to be kind of epic. He said, software demand grows faster than hardware specs. That is... true generally. I've... I have felt that the graphics cards have gotten very good in the past couple of years, um, whereas the games have not been demanding it as much. I love, by the way, you can keep your flying power and continue flying. This is what I love about this level. It's the fact that, like, yeah, just, just, you know, you can just fly. Just go for it. You know, who's stopping you? There you go. I'm missing four. <laughs> I'm missing four. Alright, I'll just keep going back a bit. I'm probably just sitting back here. There's nothing flying above here. Nano machine, son. He also said very quotable. Oh, here we go. Uh, just because a resource is cheap, it should not be squandered. Yeah, I that definitely I I do agree with that. And I, I do also agree that yeah, the software seems to push hard. And I think it's just because we have harder software problems in general you know like i mean like even on the highest end it's like we're thinking about quantum before we even like know how to like tackle quantum and hardware let's law it's not even focus on games that does sound right though that does sound about right um i think ultimately at the end of the day for games uh gonna be a year and a few months since we're stuck oh yeah yeah Okay, listen, I, I will promise the next game we're not going to do in the PS1 generation. I will guarantee that. Okay, this cutscene. I This cutscene. I warned you about this. This cutscene amazes me. Okay. He looks at his watch, you know. And then he gets hit by a bus. It's... It, it, <laughs> As a kid, I think this cutscene is, like, this cutscene is the reason why I am, <laughs> I am a messed up individual when it comes to my humor. Because that is the funniest thing I have ever seen in a, in a kid's video game. Out of nowhere. Like, it's, <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> the, the end of an average Japanese work day. <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, jeez. So, I I just want to say, um, that's it. That's 100% his time was up. <laughs> that's it. That is 100% everything. Which means, we're going to do it. We're going to fight All the right, end boss. Spyro, you got the orbs. Defeat of Ripto is only moments away, right? 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 Yeah, yeah okay, so. Here we go. The final, the final boss. Well, we got a little bit more after this and a little bit more after that. So don't feel like the stream is just about to end, but. Oh my gosh, scared sheep. Ah, come back here, you useless animals. Hey, Shorty. Whoop. <laughs> Maybe I can help. <laughs> what? You again? Yep. If you want to test that power crystal, why don't you try it on me? I'll stand still. I promise. Hmm. I like that idea. Dragon, you've just sealed your fate! 
So definitely Spyro 2 has much more uh, intense boss fights compared to the first game. They are all a bit of a joke in the first game, but here it's like, this fight's legit Spyro, a bit gnarly. Spyro, we want to help you fight Ripto. Elora is using the orbs you collected to store power-up energy. The Hunter number of orbs you get doesn't affect this, don't worry. As they become ready. Even as we speak, the professor is experimenting with new forms of power-up energy, so you'll soon have abilities that no one has ever seen before. So, yes, in this final boss, you've just got to learn these brand new mechanics. He's gonna... He's got uh, two attacks, basically. He, 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 well, sorry, yeah. He All he does is he throws fireballs at you. Um, but he can pick up these orbs. If you pick up the orbs, you get a power. So here, I mean, it's just a flame power. It's nothing really too weird. You'll probably get two hits, maybe three, because he starts moving faster and faster. But he's going to try and pick up the orbs. Um... The orb power you actually get, also you can flame them, just to give yourself a bit of a way. The orb power you get depends on the color of the last one you get. So here, this one's kind of annoying. Uh, it's not too bad. I buy these like weird little bombs. Here. <laughs> Although it's like, hey, you probably get two or three hits, and then I get like five. Whoops. Uh, obviously, as before, the uh, skill point is uh, beat Ripto without uh, taking a hit, which I have not done, but. Listen, we got, we got a strat. We got a strat, don't worry. He then uh, summons a robot gulp. Just out of nowhere. And uh, we repeat the boss fight. The abilities are still the same, so if I didn't see the the blue power, I will show it off in a moment. If There you go, just another blue. Cool, thanks. This is uh, just a supercharge. As a, as a power. TF2 MVM new update. Woo! Oh, TF2. Try my best to make sure he doesn't pick up powers, but if he does, uh, you know, both this and the previous stage has three different unique abilities, depending on if he, you know, what orbs he picks up. So here, um, this one's probably the safest one. Other than his lasers go all over the place, but sure. Okay, sure. Uh, no, 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 I want it, I want it. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 I want this one as well. Okay, uh, that one's way out of the way. <laughs> um, so yeah, moral is, you can be happy with your graphics card. Uh, you know, I don't, I still do not think that the uh, new demand because of the new consoles is legit. I did start thinking of one thing though. And I thought this was an interesting point. Well, if if the memory is a concern, because the consoles have, um, you know, at least the big ones, have a 16 gigabyte shared memory for the uh, for the graphics and for the the no, I guess the system memory and all that stuff. Oh, he's sitting on it. He's sitting on it. Just, just get in there. Get in there. Oh. I think we're good, actually. There we go. And, uh, it blows up, and then also, I love these gears and these, like, golden orbs all over the place. Uh, he then just turns one into a duck. Or a chicken thing. And then Spyro starts to just fly. He does a loop-de-loop, -loop, and suddenly, you know, there's these, like, spots of lava coming out of the ground, and there's no more ground. So, okay. Sparks is back, so don't worry. But I don't think he gets a heal. Uh, this is infinite fly, infinite uh, flame. Try your best to, to hit him as many times as you can. This is a fun boss fight though, but it's definitely like, you know, just like the other boss fights. Maybe gulp's a little different, but, oh sorry, uh, crush is a little different. But it doesn't play anything like the rest of the game. And I guess that's probably the big take home. This game, I don't know. I. There's been so many mechanics, so many things. So, those are the days where devs were like, so which animal should we base our boss on visually? And then I randomly opened the page in the uh, taxonomy book and we're like, okay, this is, it. yeah, exactly. Spyro the dragon, Hunter's a cheetah, Laura's a fawn, and Ripto's a uh, midget. I think he's supposed to be like an e. Gulp's a big guy with a club. 
Anyway, that's enough hits, and then he just decides to drown in lava. He doesn't scream, he doesn't, like, <laughs> react, he just goes down. That is it. That is indeed Ripto done. Another child murder from PS1, exactly. He's short, not young. It's okay. He's probably got the deepest voice out of everyone in this game. So we did it! Woo! Just slap that on the guidebook. It just goes there, obviously. And, uh, we did it. I don't think we can ever thank you enough, Spyro. <laughs> I suppose you have to go now? Yeah, I'd better. They'll be missing me in the Dragon Worlds, and I've still got a vacation to take. I need it more than ever now. Before you go, I think that Moneybags has something he wants to give you. Hmm, I most certainly do not. Hunter? Oof. One fell swoop. Spyro, oh, ugh, hands, down. hands down. Hands down. So much on your way through Avalar. I don't we think the remakes models the help. Reward for helping us. Wow, thanks. Sparks, can you grab them? <laughs> Sparks just picks up just all the money. In the new coordinates and there, Spyro. It's not two two four seven five this time. Shores. Hey, why don't you guys come with me? I bet you could use a holiday. I'm afraid we can't, Spyro. Ripto may be gone. I'm afraid not. There's still one more bell. Short stay. We'll be cleaning up for weeks. Just remember, though, that you can always get back to Avalar from Dragon Shores if you want to visit. Well, okay. Come on, Sparks. We've got a lot of vacation to catch up on. And that's it. That is the game. Although we've got a bit more to still look at, but yeah. And they do a credit sequence with the same music and in the same style as the first game, so... I've really enjoyed playing this one again. I didn't realize how... how neat it is. I think the only thing is just the mechanics are hit and miss, but... Man, they tried, man. It was like 20 minutes in, I played a hockey game, and just we never played hockey ever again. <laughs> so, uh, it's a, it's a fawn. So it's like a goat. Uh, yes, Moneybags gives you, well, Moneybags relinquishes all his money, so even though I had 5,900 gems, I will now have all 10,000 back, so. Uh, there's not really any huge point, but it makes you feel good after collecting all of them, so. There you go. Um, yeah, no, this, this game was, was good fun. Um, I definitely appreciate, I guess the only thing, was it Sony Games? There he is! <laughs> so yeah, um, oh yes, so the one thing I thought about the new consoles was, well if we're having problem problems with the video memory, is there any other part of the consoles that is very different from, you know, most PCs at the time? And I realized the, the, the disk storage, the games, you know, the, there's a real fast 5000 megabyte per second drive on the, the PS5, and, you know, a, anyone who's tried installing their own drive into the PS5 knows you need one of the top-end ones if you want to be able to actually use it in the PS5, otherwise it yells at you, and it says, no, it's too slow. But on PC, obviously, that's people still running hard drives, and we've, we've filled quite a number of games that need at least a SATA or SSD. But I was thinking, well, isn't that like, you know, Microsoft Direct, uh, direct Storage? Uh, DirectX technology, and I realized there's one game that uses it, and it's Forspoken. And it cuts your load times from 10 seconds to 1 second. It doesn't really come forward in mid-game, but I, trust me, I'm calling it now. You're gonna spot some game in the next 6 months that is going to rely on that so hard it doesn't run right. Actually, I think, um... Uh, in the mid 2000s, it didn't have a DVD drive only CD. I actually, I, I had the same boat. I didn't have a CD drive until like, or a DVD drive until like 2011, 2012, probably 2011. It, well, it, it's hard to find computers that come with a, a, a DVD drive, but they're very, it's very easy to find uh, USB, DVD, or even Blu ray drives. Um, welcome back to Iran. Oh, yeah, we're back in Iran. Do we, do we have the dungeon earlier? There's no real dungeon level, is there? We don't have a great example of a dungeon level. There's a dungeon in the mouth of this thing, but we're not going to see it because it's going to fade to black. So, um, did not have consoles except at the time, Game Boy SSP and DS Lite. That's some good stuff though, I'll tell you that. 
Um, but yeah, like, I remember my sister got The Sims 3, and that was a DVD game. And The Sims 2 came on four CDs, so I was really pushing at the time. Um, but yeah, I, I did get limited a little bit by um, PC games requiring DVDs when... Um, especially because, like, that was a six or seven year period where, like, they were moving to DVDs and not just CDs, but then... You know, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't catch on to War Crime, no dungeon in PS1. Exactly! Tom Kenny! Woo! Especially since, uh, my gaming, uh, magazine of choice had both a DVD and a CD version with the DVD one having many more games. I mean, yeah, it makes sense, but it's also like, you know, I, I at least appreciate they supported both, though. They had a CD version. I love how they jump from, like, they just jumped to this level as well. These are the levels they decided to, to fly through at the end. Thank you, Staff of Universal. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm calling it. In six months, we're going to find a PC port that is so unoptimized because of disk storage. Because it doesn't read fast enough. Um, also, yeah, you thought Dragon Shores was just going to be like a mention at the end. No, Dragon Shores is legit kind of an epilogue level. So let's, you know, let's experience it. Well done, Spyro. It's a big nork. Step right on into Dragon Shores Park. They all got those GN names as well, Gniles. So Dragon Shores does not have any treasure. By the way, if you win ten tokens, you can visit our theater. <laughs> it doesn't have any treasure, but if you get all ten tokens, you can you can visit the theater. So there's four different mini games going on. Uh, one of them you only got to experience once. The other three you experience three times. Right up, Spyro, and take a look at what we've got for you today. Inside this here booth, you'll find some of the most vicious creatures you've ever seen. Here's a baseball. I think this is still Tom sport. Kenny. Take aim, shoot at the target, and watch as the terrifying creatures fall into the water below. But don't worry, you won't hurt them. <laughs> nice, thanks. So, uh, yeah, this the the Yeti. He's just chilling. Oops, I can't aim. How about let's actually aim as well? You could probably stand real close to it, but hit it. Ah! Uh, and he goes down, never to be seen again. Hey, hey, that was pretty funny, wasn't it? Take this token for being such a good shot. Yeah, a token. So here's one of the ten tokens. Ah, uh, there's a new guy. There's a nurse shaper. <laughs> After last room's comments, he still deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty easy, isn't it? Have another one of these tokens. Beautiful. Beautiful. Hey. Uh, the chef guy. Did you like him? Do you like the chef? Too bad he's getting wet. <laughs> wow, you really are a great shot. Take this. It's my last token. My last token, so those are your three tokens for this one, but you know what, sure. You can keep doing it, but there's not really any point. Um we'll save that guy on the left for last. Um Hey there, young fella. I'd sure like to let you into the Do you love a guy called Gmed? But you just haven't won enough tokens. Try visiting the other attractions first. <laughs> so close to the big shot me. We could we could try it again. <laughs> Hi you Spyro. I hear you're a pretty good shot. How'd you like to try my shooting gallery? My shooting gallery. Also, okay, I love how instead I'll of no, it's good no. <laughs> so, uh, you got your supercharged power, super flame. You gotta hit all the targets. Fairly straightforward, to be honest. There you go. Easy. Nice shooting. Here's a token. Here's a token. Nice and easy. Ready for the next round? Okay, I'll set the timer for you. <laughs> My favorite enemies just oh. They're like taxidermied already. Whoops. Nice shooting. Here's a token. Yeah, it's it's the effort of a post game. I guess the first game had its own level, Ready which was uh next round? Nasty's loot. Okay, this I'll is, set this is kinda it. <laughs> so um 
Listen, I, I know Spyro 3's got a gnarly post game, I'll tell you that. There we go. These guys are kind of annoying because they'll, they'll pick different holes to get into, but it's not too bad. I've done this enough times. And again, if you're used to the inverted aiming, it's not too bad. There we go. Nice and easy. Right. Here is my last token. My last token. There we go. So that guy's done. Here's our one-off. This one is just amazing. It's the hardest free, challenge of the free, bunch, though. Free. You pay no money down and make no monthly payments. In return, I'll give you one token. One is all I can give, but you can ride as many times as you'd like. Hop aboard, my friend. So, I guess the mystery is... What love shall we find on the love cruise? And I love how it's literally a character reel of, uh, you know, the most odd pairings you'll ever think of. That one's the most amazing one. Now that is not legally allowed. Oh my gosh, that one's also not legally allowed. As promised, <laughs> here's your one token. When you have ten, try visiting the Dragon Shores Theater. For reference, yes, there are a lot of different things you could come out of that uh, that ride. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the secret agent. There's a lot of different things. You <laughs> exactly. Oh, the Yeti. <laughs> There's so many combinations of things that can happen here. It's it's spectacular. And yes, very tough, very difficult. This one is actually legitimately a challenge. Welcome to the Dragon Shores Coaster. Here at the shore, the we don't just ride, though. If you can pop all the balloons on the track, a token is waiting for you. Ready to ride? Ready to ride? Here we go. Watch out for the other coasters out there. It's a crowded track today. Uh... Yeah, yeah, there's only, like, so many things. You probably saw all of them, but... It's just the fact that, like, when you walk out of there... Also, I forgot. Uh, don't jump for all of them. But when you go out of the, um, the, the ride, you can have, uh, different guys being your, uh, you know, your number two. Uh, so yeah, so this is basically, you hit X to jump, and, uh, watch out because there are people oncoming. Also, you pop balloons by hitting them in the bottom. That's kind of weird. Uh, best not to risk it, but sometimes there are just balloons in the air. It's kind of weird. I seem to get all of them, though, on one lap, so that's, that's nice and easy. Job, also, yes, Daddy. it reminds me of There's Trouble with the Trolley. That's probably why Trouble with the Trolley also imprinted in my head a bit more. All right, I'll flip this switch and now you can ride more tracks. See if you can pop the balloons on these tracks, too. So, uh, this one's a bit more Watch involved. Out for the other coasters out there. Da -da 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 -da. This one's a bit more involved because now there's some turn-offs. You'll probably notice that the, the turn-offs, like, there's a turn-on kind of immediately, you know, before the turn-off, so... All these turn-offs is just kind of a short section of track. This one is actually rather simple. It just kind of loops around like that, but sure. Pop, 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 pop. Who put the turtles on the middle of the track, by the way? I'm pretty sure they've got a death sentence. They're just chilling there. We've got a little spiral thing here. Or a helix. It's not really a helix. It didn't, it didn't bank. Oh, <laughs> turtle, I forgot. Around the shooting gallery. Turtle chillin' there. And then, uh, this one is good fun if you miss any of the balloons. Wild West train exclusion. There's no rails as well, so the spirals are chillin' there. You can't keep jumping. Trust me, I'm trying. Get it. Oh! <laughs> Every time I always get juked by that. I don't know why, there's just turtles lying on the track. Hey, not bad. Here's another token. Here's another token. It's very happy for me. Sup, Dragoy? There's one How's more it going? run, and you're on a roll. There's a cannon installed on your car for this run, and you'll have to shoot balloons too. Are you gonna give it a try? So this is Watch probably the, the most intense <laughs> of the actual minigame. So anytime you see a red balloon, you gotta be hitting the circle. Sometimes they're a little awkward to hit. I seem to get these ones fine, so that's good. 
Maybe I've just done this enough times before that it's like not too bad. Yeah, okay, this one's a real awkward one to hit. Yeah, okay. I'll come back around for it. There's no time on it, so if you miss any, just you, you just come back around. <laughs> so, uh, but as long as you don't touch anyone, if you run into something, you start again. Um, they seem to get rid of the turtles this time around. Okay, cool, cool. We're on a roll, we're on a roll. That's what the guy at the beginning said. <laughs> just keep shooting, why not? Oh, no! <laughs> okay, we're doing another lap around here. Sorry, loop de loop, we're going it. Uh, I do like me roller coasters. Maybe I'm a sucker for a good roller coaster. Do some people get like motion sick off this. I hope not. I'm sorry if you do. Alright, here comes a guy. And I missed that balloon as well. Cool. We got two that I gotta shoot just along the main track. We'll get there. And then that, that's kind of it. That, that, that's, that's everything in this level, basically. Alright, there he goes. Die! <laughs> camera doesn't move when he is on the roller coaster. It's like Sega CD, like, roller coaster camera, you know? Where it's like, maybe you get sick. Wow, you're a natural. You've conquered the coaster. Here's my last token. So here we go, all ten tokens. That wasn't really that bad. And that's pretty much everything. You get to go up to this guy now and he's like, Well Spyro, it's your lucky day. You've managed to win enough tokens to enter the famous Dragon Shores Theater. Go on in and enjoy the show. Thank you, my man. So, sake of roller coaster. Exactly. I'm surprised there are no roller coaster Sega CD games. It feels like a missed opportunity. Walk into there and then uh, the guidebook opens and you can just watch back any particular cutscene. So you click on the button and you can watch that main cutscene again. That's your reward for beating the game and getting all the tokens. And don't wear pants, only the belt. The belt is all that's needed. So, yeah, you could just watch the cutscenes again. Did you, did you think that was a worthy reward for beating the game? You know? That's kind of it. And then he just walks out, so... There's a little bit more. Hold on. Let me see if I can get this thing open as well. There's just a little bit more as well. If you walk over to these doors, and I hope it doesn't go away, but if you've got all 10,000 treasure and all 64... Um, 64 uh, orbs, as you can see there, you walk up to this door, and it magically opens, and it reveals your core of the game. Oh, exactly, and it reveals a super flame power. Walk into it, and nothing happened. But actually, what happened is your reward for getting everything in the game is you can now super flame with no time limit. This super flame not only lasts between maps, but also lasts between save files, which means as long as you don't turn off the game physically, you can save, or so, yeah, if you save the game, you can just super flame in that save forever, I think. And that includes new save files. So you can effectively new game plus the game, but with a different flame power. Now the reason why I might have mentioned RIP PC, oh, where did the PC die? Oh no, RIP PC. Uh, but the reason why is because now, as well, let's go back to the guidebook. And here's the catch. So now, after beating the game, you'll also see skill points. I have done my best. This is... There are two pages of skill points. Why do I have the... Oh, because the epilogue is partially visible. But there are uh, 16... Imagine flame... Oh yeah, exactly. There are 16 things to do to get skill points. Um, I have... 14 of them. Uh, I think there's 10 on the page, right? Yeah, that, yeah, that winds up. So, remember, every time I did the thing and I said, oh, I get a skill point, and then a, a, a life butterfly comes out, that shows up here now. So, hitting all the cacti in Skillless Badlands. Um, there's also a uh, Catbat Quartet, remember that. 
Harakos, hit all the windmills. Uh, Colossus, perfect in hockey. Three laps of the supercharge. Uh, perfect crushes boss. Uh, hit all the, the, the trees. And Gaming is not over yet. We still got a little bit more to go. So, uh... Under par time in the speedways, Idle Springs land on the idol, Aquaria Towers hit all the seaweed, and Gulps Overlook hit Ripto. There are two challenges I have yet to do. And uh, the reason why, you know, I kind of waited here is because, uh, well, they both beat Gulp and beat Ripto without taking a hit. And now you can kind of see, well, if I got this Super Flame, that's going to make these a lot easier. Exactly. Why put in the effort? Why put in the effort? To legitimately do the fight without taking a hit when you can just use his ability and i kind of like that that's kind of a fun bonus you could exactly we get to kill him again you could put in the effort and legitimately do it yourself and i've done it once i haven't done it for rip though actually no i have because i've done the the retro achievement set and i'm pretty sure the retro achievement set asks you to do it before you uh get the super flame hop down we're now fighting gold but this time look at that Listen, you can you can just hit gulp. You don't have to do the the boss fight. You can just hit gulp. You can also technically hit uh, Ripto in the back if you wanted that one skill point. Look at that! I beat the boss, no hits. I'm amazing. That was so difficult. <laughs> so that was uh, one of the skill. Exactly, exactly. Now the Ripto fight is a little more involved. Because he's, he's a little harder to hit. But the theory still stands. You don't actually have to participate in the boss fight. You just have to, you know, you just have to hit him. So, exactly. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I would highly urge, if you've never done the skill points, have a go back at the game. Because none of them are like that, I mean, they're, they're obscure. But none of them are like that crazy difficult. It's a fun little extra thing for you to do. Um, and for me, when I played this game, you know, like 13 or so years ago, however long ago on my channel, yeah, because he starts going sideways and then it's like, oh, you gotta, like, kind of readjust yourself. Make sure he doesn't hit you, but that's okay. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. And you can play the whole game again with that kind of feeling. Now remember, I gotta do this fight without taking a hit, so... Shouldn't be too bad for the first two stages. But remember, the last stage, you already had the Super Flame, so you do have to get the last stage done without taking a hit, just regularly anyways. And you can't skip this. Well, there you can. Amazing. Cool. So, you gotta make sure you don't get hit. But I don't think I got hit when I did this before, so maybe I did. Maybe I did once. There he is. His health took a little bit of a delay there. Come on. Did I hit him? Nope. Okay. Still no. Okay. I guess he's just gonna watch the fireball hit him, I guess. Love he's flying outside the level as well. Oh. <laughs> okay, definitely clip past the camera there. But yeah, if you haven't if you haven't done the skill points like, uh, ever before, like I hadn't done originally, there you go, we did it. And then he drowns, and then oh, I should I should have watched that. Ripto defeated. <laughs> so, and that is formally Battle for Britain World War Two. Oh, we do have to watch the credits again. Oh, I can skip the credits. I think that is formally the end of the game. If that makes sense. It's probably going to throw me in Dragon Shores again. <laughs> yeah. That is formally the end of the game. Now, every skill point you get earns you one page in the epilogue. So now I have all 16. And I shall show you, the viewer, if you've never seen the epilogue, it's just something. So you go over to skill points. We now have all 16. They go, well done, because you did it. That's cool. Hit X, epilogue, and here we go. The epilogue is, you know, kind of cheap and easy, but... Gulb found a new life at the Society for the Protection of Abused Monsters Petting Zoo. There you go. Some of the Earthshapers joined the Fawn Dance trope... Troop? Troop? I think? In Fracture Hills. That is a mega-cursed image. 
one of Spyro's friends found a new toy. Hunter's scuba diving career got cut a little short. Hunter just <laughs> immediately dead. Moneybag swindled the bone builders one time too many. Agent Zero found some new recruits to train. <laughs> oh, exactly. The ice builders finally made it to the Colossus for the big hockey game. The chef finally got to host a hot tub party. This one is the most amazing one. Spyro missed his chance with Alora. Crush decided to pursue higher learning. <laughs> Spyro was confronted by the black sheep of the herd. And then uh, you get these uh, Fauna's Mortars basically. So these are uh, monster ideas they didn't actually get to implement in the game. Um, you could maybe take a guess which levels? I don't know where a Catabatis would have ended up. Seems that they had more ideas for the robot farm level though, because uh, all these like angel characters all over the place. Lizardum Fat Slobby. <laughs> I, I want to miss the fist this back to Iran. Oh, exactly. <laughs> what? What? Amazing. And that is the end. So, that is indeed the technical end of the game. So, if you enjoyed that, I hope you did. I really, really had a good time playing it. Now, we're a little bit shy. We're not there at two hours yet. And I have one last thing. I have one last thing to show you. I shall now... I guess I have to exit the level. What's like that guy from the movies who loved cheese? Uh, what game next? I haven't formally decided, but I, I will guarantee it's going to be a game that's not on the PS1 generation because I think I've been playing so many games at that time. And it's kind of weird. I, I told a mate about it and he was just like, like, how do you remember the games that came out in 1999? Ness or Ness? Could be newer. Could be PS2. I haven't decided the game. I, I, like, I can legitimately not answer you there. So I'm going to now go to slot two. And we're going to start a new game because I want to show off two glitches. And these are two rather interesting glitches. Um, these are kind of the ones that I can pull off. So we're going to start the game as usual. Uh, in the world of Avalar. So I want to show off that there's um, there's a couple of cheats as well. I, I also want to mention that there's a couple of cheats. Um... But I'm going to show off two glitches, and then I'm going to show off a couple of cheats. So, here we go, Spyro goes into the, this level. Now, as you saw, I had a way of getting to the, um, the... I, there's a ladder that you have to climb up in order to get one of the orbs. I had a way of getting there without actually needing the climbing power. There's a real hacky way of going about this, and I expressly tried not to pull it off in the middle of the game. Basically... Spyro 2 is the only game, uh, uh okay, Mr. Group, I'm gonna show a cool glitch though. Spyro 2 is the only game that you can do this in. It doesn't work in the first game, and it, it can be unlocked with a game shark code in the third game. If you charge at some point in the middle of the jump, you actually end up a bit higher. So if I try and glide towards this wall, obviously, very far away from the top. But, if you charge somewhere in the middle of your jump, you'll get the timer if you try it a few times. Spyro kind of double jumps. He goes higher, and that allows you to go out of bounds in so many levels. And the bounds here are very well defined. It's like clearly any way that you can stand. Um, but uh, yeah, and don't feel afraid if you're out of bounds, because you can just... Yeah, exactly, the speedruns do this. Don't be afraid if you go out of bounds. You can just easily push your way back into bounds. And because you can easily see what's going on, for helping us that's that's the end of the level you can just do that this glitch is so ubiquitous you will find so many places that you can just jump out of the level and uh this is referred to as the double jump or sometimes the charge jump um but uh yeah you can this is the speedrun strat and you can do so much and i shall demonstrate um one exploit that I can definitely do quite consistently, um, but it is possible with a combination of the, the exploits to beat the whole game 
by immediately breaking your way out of bounds in all three hubs and flying your way to the boss. Including, including Ripto. Because in order to get to the boss normally, you gotta have all the talismans up to that point. So, you can't really skip anything normally, or well, too much. Um, but I want to show off this fun glitch. So, Moneybags over here is going to tell us that we don't have enough money for the, for the swimming pal. Now, there are a couple of cheats that you can actually activate in-game. If you pause the game and hit circle, 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 square, you'll hear a da ding This da ding means you now have all the abilities. You're now able to swim. But while you are still in this level, Moneybags still technically hasn't given you the ability to swim. Now, I also want to add, your save file hasn't acknowledged that you have spent money at Moneybags. But when you reload the map, Moneybags will disappear because he, the game believes you've bought the swimming power, right? But what happens right now? Because Moneybags is still in memory trying to sell you it, but you've got the swimming power. Obviously, I don't have I enough money, right? Spyro. Except he offers you to pay 500 gems, despite the fact you've only got 53. You can say yeah. Great. He goes to the same, you know, rigmarole. And then... Okay, my money didn't go down. Now, very importantly, here we go, here we go. Save the game. Save the game. We're going to save the game. And I'm now going to exit the game. And we're going to load back into the save. Now, the save file now knows... I have 53 gems total, and I must have bought the swimming power because I proceeded to do that dialogue with money bags. The game figures out how much money you actually have based on, you know, it, it calculates all the gems you've gotten in all the levels and then subtracts as many as you've bought from money bags. That means I actually have negative 447 gems right now. Yeah, <laughs> so so that screen is going to show a negative number, and as as a bonus points, um, the gem counter in the top left uh, does not know what you really mean by that. It's going to hit zero at some point because it's basically showing the bottom digit. Um, so at some point, when I have like a multiple of ten in the negative, it'll show a zero. And you'll yeah, so it'll show a zero when I'm back at negative four forty. But until I get back up to a positive number, it's just going to keep you know, cycling through these 10, um, you know, glitch text, basically. The stuff with absolute play. Oh, exactly, yeah. I, I think the way this works is that, um, like, it's not showing the higher digits, it's only showing one digit because you have less than 10. So, I believe it continues acknowledging that, but then it tries to go, okay, well, what is your, and by the way, I still have the super flame, just want to note that, um, but then it goes, okay, well, you have to have one digit, which is the bottom digit. So then it goes, well, that amount is your amount of money modulo 10. So basically, like, if you divided your money by 10, what's the remainder? Um, in a lot of computer stuff, a negative number modulo will still remain being a negative. It doesn't, like, wrap around. And uh, in that case, yeah, it's basically trying to find where in memory the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 all is, and then going negative on that one. Um, so that's probably what it's uh, iterating over. It's good fun. It's probably going over, like, uh, the letters text. Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. The, the item glitch. Actually, shout out to when I played Pokemon Blue on... didn't play it on stream, but the Let's Play. And I basically showed off the Professor Oak glitch. I actually showed off, um, when I did gold a year or two ago. It was like, um, I showed off how to get Celebi. And it, it, I, I just so coincidentally had, like, the right setup for that, so that's cool. Uh, I should now also demonstrate... Um, it's fairly easy to get to gulp. Sorry, to get to, to crush. This is, this is the other glitch I wanted to show off. Um, this one takes a little bit of working around, and so I'm going to show off something I never had on in the entire game, which is the map. There is a map. There it is in the corner. It's not really the most useful, but it does get your bearings in the level a lot more. Sup, Anthony? How's it going? Um... It gets your bearing in the levels a little more. Uh, the remaster has a map available in all three games, but the original releases only Spyro 2 had a map, and I kind of feel, uh, I didn't really need it. And if you guys didn't get lost, then you probably didn't need it either. So, uh, the key thing to note is, um, we've got two places we need to get to. So, if you couldn't swim, 
without the cheat, then you you would be able to do a charge jump here. Oops. It's a little bit precise, just to get over the wall. Oh, ah, if you botch it up, you'll just, you'll just get a runway hunter as again. Um, I'll take a few goes, I'll get this. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is this would be, um, I mean, I guess, <laughs> with a bit more grace and execution. Oops, sorry, nice. Hunter. Sorry, Hunter. Sorry. With a bit more grace and execution, but uh, a speedrunner effectively does that. He'll go through Glimmer in the fastest way possible like that, and then he'll walk up to here. He'll do the charge jump. Ah, that, was, that was abysmal. Come on. There, oh, there we go. He'll do the charge jump and then glide around and try to land here. So, without swimming, you've gotten past the barrier that required swimming in the level. And in fact, that's actually the only swimming in the, in, you know, in the whole run, basically. You don't need climbing. Actually, you kind of need climbing. And you kind of need <laughs> the other abilities now, now you're at it. Um, now, this gets you over here without needing swimming. Which would be absolutely horrendous if you went into um, Sunny Beach and you know, not swimming. But now, uh, I. Oh, I guess I've got the Super Flame, so it's not 100% accurate. But trust me, you can hit this button with the regular flame. Um, so, so trust me, it's the same boat. What you want to do is you want to stand where the, the, the wall comes down. The ground texture makes it fairly obvious where that happens. You can see that there. Um, and you can see that the, the you know. The ceiling doesn't actually come down. They've been trying to save on the triangles very, uh, very hard there. So, um, that basically is grounds for... Hold on. You gotta you got be a little careful, though, because you can push yourself out of this gate, but it just kind of means you don't have to set up the gate again. Whoops. Okay. Oh, well, oh, dang it. Okay. So, if you, if you accidentally push yourself out of the gate, you just gotta, you know, crush yourself with the gate again. Let's do that again. Come on, okay. Yep, yep, yep. I think we're good. Oh, yep. Charge. Ah. Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> it's a little tricky. It's a little tricky. I'm not the fastest at doing this, and I don't particularly do this because the next hub is nigh impossible. It's very hard for a speedrunner to do. So, anytime you see a speedrunner actually do the second hub, they're gods among men. But yeah, if you do that, you fly outside the level, you can fly to where the hole is, and you will trigger the bit of the hole that goes to crush. Remember, I just started the save. I have... Before you get to yeah, 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 I get, I get it. I get it, I get it, I get it. <laughs> I, I am at crush right now with... Uh, negative 335 treasure. So, and then you can fight crush. Uh, I guess I'm gonna... Oh, snap. He's immune. He's immune. You can't beat him. You can't do it! The one- the one enemy who's immune to the flame. You could probably just hit him from a distance. But, uh, he's immune to the flame! Amazing! So... Uh, but yeah, no. The... The... I... That double jump glitch? That is an incredible glitch because... It's so ripe for speedrunning opportunities. And that's, I guess, a kind of secret thing, a hidden thing... I do super enjoy about this game, is that... The speedrunning opportunities are rather ridiculous. I guess with all the, the Spyro games in particular, but... That one's probably so ridiculous, a lot of people say basically, uh... Beat the game by actually getting to the end of the game and not, uh... <laughs> not, you know, just... Just jumping your way past everything. Um... So... Yeah, exactly. The, unfortunately, you can't do it in the remaster. Maybe someone has done a mod to try and recreate the behavior, but uh, for the most part... Yeah, yeah. You sometimes had, like, revision games. Um, so, like, uh, I know off the top of my head, Gran Turismo had um, two save-breaking, or one save-breaking bug. So that's why there's a, uh, a version 1.1 of the game. And then there's also a version 1.2 uh, of the arcade disc. Because there was a glitch in that version, I, I think it couldn't load garages properly or something like that. Um, but not the other disc, so it's like there's technically two versions of one of the discs and three versions of the other. It's good fun. Um, oh yeah, I love flying islands, and I, I, I love like just the fly through, and I do wish, I do always wish that there was a bit of a no-clip kind of mode. 
look at that, I beat him with no hits. Um, but yeah, I, I do think there's something actually really special about this game, and... No, and, uh, I don't know, the way the world's uh, created, the kinds of things that you can do. Um, now, I'm, I'm gonna say, mm. no hope with me. Um, oh yeah, Strange Geometry, and some people always will note, like, finding hidden parts of the map, and there's just, like, stuff going on there. I believe uh, all the cutscenes do take place in the real versions of the maps, but they have, like, some objects just not loaded. Um, so particularly, like, portal textures and stuff like that. Now, I'm trying to recall, what's the strat here? And I think it's actually to, like, do a jump up here, but it's rather iffy. I can't recall what it was. Um, but I'm pretty certain it was, like, this jump, but I haven't practiced it too much, so... Excuse me if I just give up after a while. Um, and obviously, yeah, you, you don't have the ability to climb up. If you had the ability to climb up, this would be a lot easier, but I don't think it was there. I'm not too sure if it was there. I know that there's this outside wall. Uh, oh, I guess I could probably just do the outside wall. I guess that makes sense, yeah. And yeah, remember, you're not really supposed to get on this outside wall until... Maybe I guess I, if you get that, uh, what... Oh. <laughs> Whoops. No one saw that one. No one saw that. <laughs> um... But I guess, like, yeah, this is... You know, like, 1999 is starting to get to this end of, uh, of an era. And maybe, maybe that's, uh, that's an appropriate thing, because I haven't, you know, I've been playing so many... Outside Wall's probably just slower than the one at the door. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, it, it's definitely slower, but it's probably easier. Um, but yeah, now you can see the the angle you gotta do. Oh, it, it gets tricky, it gets tricky. So basically you can do a jump from there, and then you can do a jump onto the roof. There's some weird angles you can stand, but it basically allows you to get all the way to um, the part of the level that's like past the broken wall that gets you onto the very top of the roof um, because you want to Sorry. then take oh, yeah, okay. because uh, afterwards you basically uh, do that door glitch again so uh, like in the first world where I had the door close on me and I was technically in like a negative space you do the exact same thing for the wall that you break because you can go through the wall but you can't go back through the wall, if that makes sense. The wall, you can pass back through it, out into the area that you should have been normally. Ugh, no. I'm not, I'm not rocking the landing on the door as well, because I know you can kind of recover from the door, but... That's when I'm going to take one more stab at it, and I'll just call it a day. Um, but effectively, yeah, you can, you can work your way all the way to the, um... Uh... All the way to the um, to that door, and then it's a incredibly precise kind of you know way to glitch yourself into the wall, and that will allow you to fly your way to the boss. Um, so definitely, yeah, that's that's a, a cool glitch, and then it gets you all the way to the second boss again without getting any of the talismans. Okay, well, but I did I did rescue it, <laughs> I did rescue it, so I'll take one more go. All right, one more go, one more go. Come on, come on. If I fall, I'm done. If I fall, I'm done. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really that good at it, so. Uh, I will mention as well, there is still indeed a way. Man, I'm, pff, I don't think, I, there must be something I'm doing wrong. It's been a while since I looked it up, so. Um, so I will do it again. <laughs> Fine, one more, just for you, just for you. Um. There is, uh, I, 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 I can guarantee I am not skilled enough to do the, um, the last glitch to, to get to the, um, the boss. So the best I could say is I could get onto that ledge. Um, but, uh, there is a way to do the third boss. Um, but you will need to do something called a proxy jump. I've pulled it off once with a, uh, with an emulator. Oh, but I had a little more to show though. That's the other problem as well. I have a very little, little bit more to show. Um. So basically, if you charge into an enemy at just kind of the right angle, you'll actually, like, weirdly bounce high into the air. Uh, this is referred to as a proxy jump. And uh, you can do that on one of the, like, penguins that gives you butterflies in the final world. Um, 
you could basically use that to bounce up over the barrier that requires the ground pound. And then uh, you could do something which I don't know of an easy level. Actually, I guess the first level. So how about if I botch this up, I'll, I'll try and show off. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to show off the swimming through the air glitch. Even more to show? Exactly. There's a, still a couple more things to show. I knew I had a bunch like of spare things. So I, I thought this would be kind of neat. Let's just get it all out of the way, you know? Um, let's see if I can pull off the swimming in the air. I'm, I'm gonna burn lives on this one, I'll, I'll guarantee that. So, swimming in the air basically involves being out of bounds, and then uh, I technically have all the abilities, so... Um, let's see if I, like, do I know this... Uh, swim in the air glitch, here we go. Yeah, so you need to be able to do the, the head bash. So maybe I'm not too sure. Actually, yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll give it a go. But basically, I believe you try and head bash, kind of near the edge of the water, but outside the level. So I'm gonna try and push my way outside the level, and then we're gonna. That wasn't that wasn't really quite it. But effectively, you want to head bash while you're still outside the level, and somehow kind of tag the surface of the water but not enough that you're in the level. That way, you'll trigger being on the water and diving, but you're still outside the level. And in order to stop swimming, you have to swim up to the surface. But when you're outside the level, you, you don't have to be in the surface. And that is the bit I want to activate. Because that will allow me, at least, to show you the fly-through. So, hold on, let's, let's get this once more with, with effort. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I just I just fell back inside the level. <laughs> I'll keep trying. I'll keep trying. I got a bunch of time. <laughs> but yeah, oh, there's so many cool glitches in this game. And it's just the fact that, like, they take a bit of work, but you feel very cool for doing them. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious if the minimap does affect it. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, if I botch this up, I'll turn it off. <laughs> okay, here we go, and... I only botched that off because I, uh... <laughs> I, I lost track of how to get back inside the level. I can't- I cannot recall doing it in this, like, part of the level, but... Since it's the, an easy way to break out of the level. You know. And obviously, you can only do it in levels that you swim. I, I don't believe you can carry forward swimming into other levels. So, because it, it, it just resets. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that that's why I said I was going to burn lives on this, because uh, <laughs> it's very easy to just, you know... <laughs> To just go for it. So how about, let's just activate another glitch. You can't swim in the air. Sorry, another cheat. Um, you can't swim in the air, but uh, one thing you can do is that uh, anytime you uh, go into the pause screen, you can hit up, right, down, left, up, square, R1, R2, L1, L2, up, left, down, right, up, down. And Spyro turns black. You know, as you do. Uh, Pretty much, uh, you heard one ding, and then Spyro changed color. And uh, there's actually multiple colors you can do. So if I do up, right, down, left, up, square, on R2, L1, L2, up, left, down, right, up, and then square. Now he's pink. You know, as, as you do. As you do. There's a few colors you can choose. I'm not really too sure why you can, but sure. So, okay. Uh, Alright, well... Not, not too sure if that's a great angle as well. Like, it does seem that the, the wall slips away from me, so maybe it would be easier to find a wall that doesn't slope away from me. If I can keep right up to this edge, that'll probably be the best. So, we'll keep taking stabs. And honestly, as well, worst part, if you game over, you just hit the main menu again. 
You don't really lose that much. Unless you're in the middle of a level, in which case, yeah, yeah, okay, you lost a little bit. But you could just also just save in the menu. If you're, if you're worried about, like, dying, you're like, oh no, save. Just, just do that. Easy. Um, Alright, we'll take, take a couple of stabs at it. If I can't get it uh, in the next five minutes, we'll just say, like, you know, just watch some guy pull it off. But it's pretty cool. I would like to be able to do it. Oh, okay, okay, so we'll stay close to the edge here, and... Nope, I just pushed my way back into the level. Yeah. Dang it. I'm going off memory, so maybe I am just doing it in a very, like, hard spot. But, I'm under the impression you can pull it off. Especially here, because it's just like, oh, there's water up to the edge of the level. I'm gonna turn right. I'm gonna jump out of here. Okay, here we go. Uh, and of course, yeah, if you accidentally fly in, like, back into the level under the water, you are now under the water and not swimming. So, good luck. There is, like, that. that is a soft lock. That is, you have to basically exit the level and come back in. Um, so, I don't think I've said the name Stuart Copeland today. I'm going to just say it again. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, oh no, I think I've gone way too wide. Uh, nope, okay. I'm not pulling it off. I'm not pulling it off. So I'll probably hit the game over screen. You can finally see what the game over screen looks like. I saw it enough times as a kid. Especially the first game. I found the first game very tricky. I, uh... Don't think I've actually seen it in the third game, but that's because I didn't play it as a kid. You know. After playing Spyro 2 so many times, and then you just get into Spyro 3, and you're like, oh, yeah, cakewalk. Except for a handful of the, um, uh, the dragon, the dragon eggs. Yeah. Oh, oh, am I falling? Oh, no. I'm, no, nah, I'm not, I don't think I'm pulling this off at all. Alright, we'll take one more stab, and then I'm just gonna get the game over and we'll call it a day there. Uh, I've still got a couple more things to show off, so I, I'm not going to stream just yet. Uh, do you think the first game was just harder, or you just older uh, enough and experienced from Spyro 1 to not die? No, I do believe the first game is harder. I, I do believe that. Um, I think the second game is trickier, but things like Trouble with the Trolley doesn't cost you lives. It's just... I think it's also like, you know, they're not necessarily... Well, wasn't a death, at least, but... Um, I definitely think that there's, like, there is more mechanical variety of Spyro 2, but I think there is, like, some degree of, like, it's a lot easier to traverse the levels in Spyro 2. I think that the levels, uh, like, they're all very even in terms of the amount of content they actually have, but Spyro 1 has, like, it's got treetops. It's got some real crazy levels. When it comes to, like, the amount of, like, nooks and crannies that you have to, like, understand and find. Um, here, like, there's a couple of moments, but I'm not too sure if that's, uh, oh, snap. Nope. Okay. To the game over screen. <laughs> uh, there you go. He flies around and lands on an image. And then you get to press start, and uh, it's just back here. <laughs> Not even the main menu. And I'm still pink, so uh, there's a few other colors you can choose, but I also want to mention there's a couple of other cheats you may want to do, like up, 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 R1, 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 circle. Spyro now has a massive head. He just does, okay? It's, it's kind of weird. It's kind of cool. You know, the fire does not come out of the right spot, but sure. Um, here's another one. Uh, we have left, right, left, right, L2, R2, L2, R2, square. And Spyro is now um, 2D. It is very thin. It's actually a kind of cool effect because the, the lighting is still fairly consistent. But, uh, oh boy, <laughs> if you had to play the whole game like this, uh, Paper Mario mode, we'll just say. 
I'm curious why they even did this, you know? Like, it looks fairly normal sometimes, but then it's just like... <laughs> uh, there's another one. Square up, square down, square left, square right circle. You probably can't see this one, but Sparks basically takes two hits while he's yellow. Hi, or two hits when he's green. I forgot which one it is, but you get an extra hit point. If you're finding the game hard, you get that one. And lastly, the last cheat code in the game. Square, circle, square, circle, square, circle, left, right, left, right, left, right. The game then just goes black, and then... I beat the game. I told you, I'm a genius. I beat the game. Yeah, I don't know. Who doesn't want to play the credits? There's a cheat code for that, you know? Sure. I have one last thing. I have one last thing to show. Um... Exactly, exactly. Yeah, off to my strat. <laughs> Arbitrary codex again. <laughs> Spyro's still thin. So uh, here's my curse save. Mm. Pink Spyro is thin and has negative 306 gems. Amazing. Mm. So I have one last thing to show, and that is, of course, just like the first game, um, there's a... There was a Crash Bandicoot game that came out at the same time. And that Crash Bandicoot game has a demo for this game, and this game, if you hold L1, R2 and hit square, you get to play that demo. Uh, I don't think it plays any audio, it's just weirdly silent for a bit. Or it like boots into it, it just like pops in I think. Oop. There it is. It just happens. So uh, yeah, the Crash Bandicoot game of today is uh, Crash Team Racing. And on disc, just like uh, with Spyro 1, there is a demo for it. If you hit a if you hit a combo, basically, uh, you can technically play four players on Spyro One or Spyro Two. You know, it technically works, but we're going with one player, um, and you basically have uh, one track. So, uh, <laughs> yep, remember how to how to do the the drift. I am not amazing at this game, I'll tell you that, um, but this game is fairly neat. There we go. And uh, yeah, it's Crash Crash Team Racing. But it's very funky drift mechanic. I forgot what the... Yeah, okay. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I'm just reminding myself how to do it. So, yeah, you hold R1 to drift and you see the bar at the bottom. If you hit L1 while it's uh, red, you're doing it right. Wasn't there a bunch of demos from that time where full game but access to late stages blocked up people made a hot speed on category of playing specifically those demos? Uh, because you need to do some skips. Do they... Do those skips actually affect the full game? That's interesting, so... Crash Team Racing is a fairly neat game and fun looking. I actually really like it. I actually love the flow of this game as well because it's like higher jumps. I mean, it's, it's wacky, there's stuff happening all over the place, but it's like higher jumps give you boosts. And you also have this ability of like, constantly making long boosts last. Whereas like, Mario Kart was just like, a boost would just kind of get you, get you to the end. You know, you, you, you hold a boost and if your boost is long enough, you would be fast at, at the end. Here it's like, it's a fair bit of skill, although, I suck at this game, I really do suck. I think it's because I'm not picking up the Lumpers. Actually, I think it's because I'm not playing as my boy Engine. That's that's why. And I'm reading chat. I know at least one game from the time I had a demo only different from the full game. We're having like a first door. You can use some out of bounds glitch. I know of um uh, some sports games, and it's like they're legitimately like that. They have um, like a significant amount of the content, but you can't you can't experience it. Am I so far behind first place? Like, is he just like all the way up ahead? Because, again, it's because I haven't been picking up the Wampus, but still. Let's see how this goes, but... Oh. Okay, I'll take first, I'll take first. The late 90s, early 2000s, such a game demo existed. I'm actually curious, when was the first, like, demo? I feel like CD games lend themselves to it because there's so much space on the disc for lots of content. Like here, I mean, it's got the music, it's got a lot of characters going on. There's obviously only one track and you're only playing as one character, but 
Look at that. Uh, maybe I'm just actually too good. Oh, one thing I, I note is at the top right, you see how it says lap 3 hyphen 3? I believe that has changed to a slash in the final game. So, there's a couple of things, a couple of things that uh, you experience in this demo that are a little different to the actual full game. And it's curious, I guess, like, both games come out around the same time. Uh, CDs with dozens of small- oh, exactly. But there's also, I mean, there's cartridge games with, like, multiple games on the cartridge. And not just, like, the Duck Hunt, um, Mario Brothers duo, but just, like, um, like, really weird little, like, flash cartridges like that. And they legitimately have, like, a bunch of games on them. There's, like, the 40,000 in one, and it's, like, there's just seven games looped over and over again. But they're all at least seven actual NES games, I think. Obscure ones, ones no one cares about. Uh-oh, timing out, exiting, demo! That's right, it, it just times out, but I'm pretty sure... Yeah, so you can just quit or restart, so... Uh, it's definitely, um... I guess it's not blowing out your ears like the, uh, the Crash 3 demo in the last game did. Um, oh, cool, when I said quit, it, it meant quit the whole... to the beginning. What's the point of quit and restart if you're just gonna start from the top again? Who knows? Who knows? But... Yeah, nah, I do like me my game my game demos, um, and uh, I would like to figure out a new magazine um, to, to read off, but I think that's everything. That's pretty much everything I know about Spyro 2. There's probably some fun things, um, you know, some people know, uh, maybe some Easter eggs, maybe some glitches, actual speedrunning strats that I know how to do. Uh, old texture CDs people look at and find the origins. Oh yeah, because it's like you'll have the same name texture. And they can spot the file, and it actually might even be the same format, um, sometimes. Um, although I can imagine, like, you know, they'd be different between the, the Nintendo 64 and the PS1. Um, you know, it might be a resolution thing, might be, uh, color depth. That usually gets to be a thing. It's just gonna hang on this screen for a while, isn't it? So if I go into the, the game, this wall is in Mario 64. Oh yeah, true. There's a lot of games like that, yeah. So if I go in and I just like wait, does it exit to the main menu or does it exit to, you know, the demo again? Some really interesting videos like that on YouTube. Um, Cutting Room Floor is also a really cool website um, at finding that kind of stuff. Um, you'll, like, you'll definitely find games, game archaeology. Oh, exactly, yeah. And it's kind of interesting as well because like, you know, we delve into the like, the inner workings of shipped releases. So, like, if you had access to beta builds, it becomes painfully obvious at times. Um, that's why demos are cool, because they're effectively beta builds. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's, like, there is so much in, like, learning the history of a game over time. It's, wow, look at the AI, by the way. They're like, oh no, we can't go too far ahead, and some of them have flat out stopped. Or they died. Full original intro of Age of Empires 2 on YouTube. Oh yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool how they had that. Okay, are we going back to the demo or are we going back to the game? Because if we're not going back to the game, then uh, we're hard dead. <laughs> I don't have anything else to show. I think that's pretty... Okay, we're just staying on the, on the demo. We are permanently in demo mode, so... Uh, some guy bought a pirated beta version in Poland. I'm amazed as well, the fact that beta versions do float around. Like, there are so many games that they're... You know, their source code is lost. But beta builds keep floating around. Someone somewhere had various points in time extracted, um, which is incredible. So uh, later some of the devs confirmed that that was the original uncut version of the intro. Ah, oh, that's so cool that they found the original file though. And especially that like, you know, shipped, it didn't have that. It didn't have the original version. But I guess, you know, you got to condense what you got on disk. So anyways, I would like... To thank you. So, hold on, there we go. So, very, very, very much for watching. So, thank you for sticking around for all the Spyro 2 goodness and, um, and especially yet another game that I had uh, played in the past and I played again, but this time I showed the epilog. So, ha. Additional scenes and referencing a relic in the There you go. So, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, and I mean, I know you're following Blood, but if you're a person on YouTube, uh, I stream on Mondays all the time, 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time now. Um, but it's a Monday for most people in some way. 
Um, I follow, I'm, I'm on Twitch, but you're watching this on YouTube if you're watching later, and I, I just re-upload this YouTube so you can subscribe there. It doesn't mean much, but it does at the same time. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. Uh, yes, having a holiday today mean I can watch your stream? Exactly! So I'm glad you stuck around, and I'm glad, you know, everyone, everyone who count, comes on, I always love having a good chat, I always love bouncing off topics, hearing what you guys have to say, um, I'm glad you guys love hearing what I have to say, because, uh, sometimes I just ramble, but, nah. I hope you all enjoyed me playing this game, all the things we talked about, and, uh, we'll have a bit of a, a mystery new game, it's a mystery to me, I haven't figured it out, but, trust me, it's not the P it's not on the PS1. We're breaking out of the PS1 for a moment, so thank you all. Have a good one. Sleep tight. Wah!